Thank you, Dick, for a proper life comes from the Bag of Dicks Company. For proper life and Bag of Dicks are not responsible if you get fucked like Big Bird. Hashtag Bag of Dicks, hashtag Beach Legals are When you're getting ready to fuck them like Big Bird, make sure you bag your dick with Revolver Live branded condoms from the Bag of Dicks Company. They will help prevent you from catching Yoga, a disease spread from 30 FPS and dick slaps, and other horrible ailments. Please don't be a peasant. Bag your dick with Revolver Live condoms from the Bag of Dicks Company. Revolver Live and Bag of Dicks are not responsible if you get fucked like Big Bird. Hashtag Bag of Dicks, hashtag Beach Legals are What's going on, guys? Welcome to Revolver Live, the gaming podcast that says forget the past. The future belongs to the nerds. I'm the Beastly Gamer, the king of all consoles. Today, joined by the Revolver team, and today we got a great show lined up for you. Joining me today, the king of all things Destiny, Briar Rabbit. How you feeling this week, my friend? I'm doing good. I had to rewind that video because I forgot to allow sound through, so I played it again with sound. <laughs> but now we're doing good. I think everything's got sound. I think everything's working. The stress part is ending, and now we get to have some fun. <laughs> sounds like sounds like beginner's luck to me. What's going on, <laughs> Willie? How you feeling, Wilson? Doing good, man. Doing good. Um, been uh, playing a lot of Destiny Two on uh, PC and some console, say. some console Overwatch. You know, got to get my Hanzo on. Um, but most importantly, man, um, I've been watching some DayZ streams, and I'm not gonna lie, man, I'm ready for that bitch to come to beta because I had a lot of hours sunk into that game. So I'm anticipating. Daisy beta to drop sometime in my lifetime. I'm Hold hoping. on. Are, oh. are you talking about coming to the PS4? <clears throat> no, no, no. On PC. Day no, Z. it's going to be dropping. Yeah, Daisy is officially going from alpha to beta sometime been, in the oh, near future. It's, it's only been, what, how many years, years has it been? <laughs> the alpha's been out for years, right? Yeah. Like over eight years, I'm pretty sure. Oh, my God. I well, just, at least it's... I just you know, wanted to I, make I, quick mention before we move on to more intros that there was a little bit of controversy last week about a certain dick being posted. Um, and I think what? that there is now definitive proof on screen uh, in our Skype chat about who the dick drawer is. As you can our clearly deeds. see, it is Wilson. He tried <laughs> to blame that shit on innocent little Gary. <laughs> it's not my medium. You call me like I think last week Gary said you're the artist. It's not my medium. I don't work with Dick Swell. <laughs> with my Dick Well, just well, not we others. can now see there is a pattern of behavior emerging. <laughs> Believable. So Gary. basically what you're saying, Briar, is that we all have reasons to be happy. You got a j dick joke in early. <laughs> Wilson talked about playing on consoles uh, and on PC. So I'm happy, and so is Gary Diaz. <laughs> what the hell is going on this week, my friend? Hide your dicks, lads, because I'm going spicy up in this bitch this week. It's game of the year. <laughs> game of the game year. Game of the year. Can't the believe life. it. Yeah, man, this is our game of the year show. Uh, a lot of work has gone into this episode, and 99 percent of that work was put in by Gary Diaz, and we love you for it, Gary. I just I wanted to say thank you. I know what my picks were, but when I looked at the uh, information that you had compiled, I felt like you should be working at IGN or Gamespot or you know Fox News or CNBC. You you do a lot of work, and and you make it look easy, and we really do appreciate it. For the people joining us for the first time and people who just like to hear it every week, Revolver Live is a gaming podcast with six revolving topics. We go live every Sunday at 6 o'clock p.m. Eastern at twitch.tv forward slash Briar Rabbit. That's twitch.tv forward slash Briar Rabbit. The video is then shared on YouTube at my YouTube channel, Beastly Gamer, and at Briar Rabbit's channel. If you're unable to see the live feed or the video format, check us out in podcast form on Podbean, iTunes, or your favorite podcast service provider. And with that, welcome. To Revolver Live, the Game of the Year episode. Let's get with it, guys. Let's get with it. <laughs> I don't have the uh, I don't have the document open. So where are we starting? Oh, I do. I have it open. Uh, we wanted to talk a little bit about the Bungie stream before we got into the Game of the Year stuff, right? Uh, Bungie did the big Curse of Osiris reveal stream. Uh, they showed some new locations. Mm -hmm. They showed uh, the new revamped lighthouse. They showed a little bit of Mercury. They showed a little bit of <laughs> the new raid lair. And uh, they showed a little bit of the Infinite Forest. What did you guys think of the reveal? Did you, everybody get to see it? Beastly, did you get to see that? I'll take that as a no. <laughs> I think he saw it in spirit. You know, he was there. Um, I, I saw it. I'm pretty pumped for it, man. Um, it started with that opening cutscene where we thought that they were kind of in the vault of glass, but it turns out it's like a simulation or whatever. So we saw 
six i'm just going to call it the vault of glass uh saw six guardians going into the vault fighting vex all of a sudden time freezes a gate opens up and out steps the man osiris and his ghost who actually has a personality and speaks unlike every other person's ghost that we've met in destiny so um she seems cool she seems funny she's got a sense of humor she seems smart they've obviously spent a lot of time together so they're they're close um yeah, basically, as you'd expect, chaos ensues, and they got to bust out of there. And it really helped, in my opinion, set the tone for what kind of um, story to expect. It was action-packed. There was twists and turns. There was um, realizations, all within one little tiny trailer. Just so much information packed in one little trailer. <sighs> and uh, then, like Briar said, we got to see the lighthouse again in better graphics, a little vamped out. They brought in some um, some furnishing. Some, you know, a lot of stuff um, that normally wasn't there. And it looks absolutely beautiful. I'm really excited. Uh, a lot of people thought that they kind of showed too much. I thought it was just enough to pique my interest. I'm excited. Mm -hmm. <laughs> just get the blood flowing to the, uh, the genitals. Question it's I had there. was, this might be the most amazing story expansion. They could give us, like tons of content for raids you know uh, loads more pvp to do do you think it matters what they give us uh, unless they fix the end game progression model that we've got because we're just going to chew through it spit it out and bounce off onto the next game in two weeks what, what do you guys think i might be different from you guys but i haven't gotten tired of destiny 2 vanilla i haven't um, really either I, you I know, do, I, I recognize I, the problems that are there. Yeah, I'm still having fun when I play it. You know, I'm yeah, doing patrols, I'm doing raids, I'm doing trials of Osiris. I'm not. I will say I'm not putting the hours in that I was putting into Vanilla Destiny in year one. Uh, but I am enjoying my time with it for sure. I would like to see a lot more end game content and a, a better investment system and better ways of doing loot and you know improvements to PvP and. There's a ton of improvements I'd like to see, but what I play, I actually do enjoy. I, I feel the same way. And, and, of course, I don't see the layers that you guys do being as versed in, in the lore as you guys are. But when I play, one of the most important parts of playing Destiny, Destiny is having someone to play with. And virtually every time I play Destiny, I have my best friend with me. You know, our TVs are next to each other. So that aspect of friendship and camaraderie and explore exploration and doing things together is always there. So it's much harder for me to get bored because even if I'm doing the weekly or the daily or, or, or doing a nightfall, I got the person who's always with me with me. So that aspect of the game never gets stale, never gets boring. And like I said, I told you guys pre-show, today I had a great time playing Destiny. I know a lot of people are done with it. You know, the end game still has people upset. They need more to do. But for me, you know, every reset. I'm ready to jump out there and get what, what I got coming to me. So, yeah. I mean, that's one thing I'll say about Destiny. I still love it. Maybe not as much as I did, you know, the first couple of weeks. But I, I it's still the game back I spent to, the most time playing Gary's all year. Back to question, though. It's like, I do think they need to fix the investment system. Yes. And, I, I, you know, the, it, Curse of Osiris isn't the only thing we're getting in December in Destiny. We're also getting uh, Season 2. And with that, hopefully, uh, some improvements to how loot works uh, in Destiny. And I think that... If they're not if they're not prepping for that system, they're not in a full on panic mode over at Bungie trying to fix that. Um, they do have some problems ahead because the game just does not hold your attention uh, like Destiny One did, Vanilla Destiny specifically. I think that over the years they actually started to lose some of what made Vanilla Destiny so special, uh, and they <clears throat> they need to find that again. Do you think it's possible that thing that made Vanilla Des Destiny so special is that it was the first of its kind and now people have gotten used to that? And For sure. once, it, be For once sure. it becomes the norm, people drift away from it. Maybe but there's no way ways, to ever have that first thing again. In a lot of ways, Beastly, is that this game feels very much like it was it's a direct it's a direct sequel to that vanilla game, but it simplified in a lot of ways. Right. There's not there's not as many systems. There's not as much mystery. There's not as much. I, I don't know. Like it's, it, graphically, it's an, a, a huge improvement. And, you know, playing it on the PC, it it's so fun to play. And I love the weapons and I love the I love the locations. But we're still 
you know, we're still very much playing the same game that we're playing in Vanilla Destiny, a game that evolved, you know, with the Tega King and with Rise of Iron, but those those evolutions are not that's what you, yeah have shown, you know? So you're saying that Destiny 2 feels like just a, the sequel to Vanilla Destiny 1 without all the expansions and without all the ways that they improved on Vanilla Destiny 1, that somehow they took a step back. I, I, I totally understand. Yeah, you okay. can clearly yeah, see that the back. game was developed after, or I'm sorry, before Taken King, because Taken King was when a lot of these changes to um, factions and faction packages and just overall ways to earn loot. Um, you could definitely tell that it was developed before Taken King. Um, I'm still enjoying myself more so on PC with PvP. I'm actually finding myself getting a lot better um, with uh, not only controller, but even with mouse and keyboard. I feel like there's a higher sk- uh, excuse me, uh, skill ceiling to hit on PC than there is on console. And that's not just an elitist thing. I don't know what I mean, it is, but I feel like there is a, a higher skill gap and more room to improve. It's definitely harder to learn mouse and keyboard if every time you jump into PvP you're using a controller. So I definitely hear that. Um, you know, what I'd say about Destiny uh, yeah, that 2. Slide. Yeah, you didn't say anything either. <laughs> yeah, when I'm... When, uh, okay, let me, let, me, let me rephrase that. When I'm out <laughs> fucking around, I'm using mouse and keyboard, but I am learning a little better. But if I'm rolling with the boys for a trial run, hell yeah, I'm going to use controller i'm gonna use yeah. what gives me my competitive edge for the time being just wait gary diaz <laughs> just wait <laughs> just gently threw that shade in there we're seeing if he uh calls it or not. Right, we, got, we have so think, much to talk about i don't want to yeah on Destiny too no much for today. sure i think that to keep it on a positive note and that's kind of i just wanted to, to see what you guys thought about that let's remember that while we may be done with the game now destiny is an ongoing game we'll be talking about ongoing games later in the show and it's not just curse of osiris coming we've got season two we've got the dawning and all of that's coming before the end of the year so lots of things to talk about on destiny and it's time will come before the end of the year so we'll uh loop back around on that i wanted to quickly touch on the i guess you know we could say at least bungie on ea because this week ea have caught Mm-hmm. pretty much the entire internet's worth of flack uh with the whole battlefront 2 progression system have you guys been following that what's your uh, yes your yeah, take on yeah. This? a little bit uh, i think it's, it's warranted i yeah. mean if i if i had to put a word to it it's warranted um you buy a star wars game with luke and vader you know i mean being the poster boys of you know selling the game and they're locked away behind i 40 mean 40 hours of work grinding. i've heard i've heard conflicting reports i've heard th- uh, r- r- closer to 30 hours is what i've heard um but like another huge problem is that like they're not rewarding the good players in games with more credits to unlock mm-hmm. these good players. so they're promoting a lot of people going afk in a corner and camping because you're only missing out on maybe five to ten less credits per game and um i think it, i think it's very much warranted um mm-hmm. and not even so much with like the amount of time that you have to put in because like me personally like i i enjoy putting a lot of time into a game maybe not that much just to unlock one character but the blatant um pay to win aspect yeah, of the that's... materials that you can get. Um, I saw a lot of YouTube videos of them doing it just for science and all the crafting materials that you can get and all these purple cards that give you like 20% extra damage and uh, faster maneuver, you know, like maneuvering and stuff. And they're just clearly shitting on people because of it. And mm. that shit is what's really burnt my ass a little more. And I'm not surprised, dude. They've been doing this shit for a long time, dude. I'm just really glad that for once, like, people, the community yeah. kind of stood up and said, dude, enough. I as, am... as a whole, too, the community collectively stood up against this type of, I don't want to say Orwellian, but it's just underhanded bullshit. You know, if, if you can pay a company like EA microtransactions and all of a sudden you you have huge advantages over everybody else it breaks the game that's one thing that you know luckily for destiny hasn't happened but if you start off you release a game with that kind of environment basically you're killing your own product before it even hits it's the shelves in my opinion so i was going to boycott um you know before the game came out and all the Pickets. negative press and everything else there yeah i was gonna boycott it and vote my wallet and everything else there but ultimately i'm a weak very small and tiny <laughs> man so i bought it on day one 
um, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Played through the um, the whole campaign, um, which was nice. It was Star Wars. It's what I wanted. You know, it took me around all the sites and the, the things of the Empire and, you know, it had an interesting story. I'm not going to say it was groundbreaking, but it was about as good as Destiny 2's. Um, really? Played through that. Got to the um, the PvP, the, the, the multiplayer. And I've got to say... This game may well be what we class as pay to win, if you want to call it that, in the same way that League of Legends, you can pay for certain heroes and unlock better characters, etc. What I will say is, if you're paying to get an advantage in Star Wars Battlefront 2, more power to you. Um, The maps are like 30 players a side, I think it is. It's like 32 players a side. Immense maps. Most of the time you're being picked off at huge ranges there's hella bloom on the guns it's a pure arcade fun experience i don't think anyone there is playing to win people are there because it's star wars they're having fun this game is fun first and foremost and they're extracting money because of the star wars franchise i think but it's so frustrating gary even if you're just there for fun if you feel like you're losing you know tie fighter battles because this guy got a star card that's got you know and his his tie fighter is faster and more maneuverable than yours you know, it, it's just really frustrating, you know? I think, and honestly, like, as someone who's... just to play some, you know, have fun in the Star Wars si- sandbox, but if mm. I feel like I'm getting pooped on because this guy spent $100 on star cards, that's not I fun. think that, as someone who's played quite a bit of it and, and had, a, had a look at it and, you know, played different map modes and things, I've never lost to someone where I felt like they've had money. I, I feel like you'd be hard-pressed to tell if someone's beaten you because they're skilled or because they've got money. Um, I think that that's the minority of players who are high rollers and whales who are putting money into this to win. It, from what I've seen, it's just going to be a fun Star Wars romp. And what I would say is if you really, really want to buy this game and you've been put off by all the negative press because you think there's going to be a negative experience, I, I don't think you'll have it. I think if you want to enjoy the game, go enjoy the game. If you want to boycott it out of moral privilege, be a bigger like man you did. and do it. Yeah, but, uh, you know, I'm just going to say they that. Also, they also yeah. have removed the microtransactions. Yeah, the microtransactions. So they may be returning. I would suspect yeah. they're returning, uh, but they've removed them due to huge amounts of pressure. Yeah, yeah I just wanted stock to prices sort of balance. Down, for Christ's sake. Quick, a quick well, question. to be fair, the whole market had a dip that day, um, but a lot of people are saying 7%. Some people are saying 2.5%. Um, the market was down that day, and after it returned to normal, they were down 2.5%. 2.5 which is down but yeah, like was, uh, it yeah. is important to note that they did like Briar said that they're bringing them back but they said that they're going to rework them so what that means is uh, are they going to be cosmetic now or are they going to be More than likely, yeah. maybe quick, maybe not quick question Gary now you mm. played through the campaign and I want this to be as, as quick as possible I was kind of cautious about this game because the original game kind of left me wanting this is worth picking up um, I'd say if you enjoy Star Wars and you enjoy the Star Wars Star universe Wars. Yeah. and you want a bit of fun, it's fun. There is a story in there. There's also a big, big, big question mark as to whether or not the storyline in this spoils The Last Jedi. I'm not going to go into specifically why, but there's some major implications that oh, shit. have really? been left unopened. Yeah, so I feel like it was a little bit sneaky for them to to put potential movie spoilers in the game and try to link their cinematic universes in that way. Um, but there are, you know, it's it's a fun romp. And I just wanted to put a bit of counterbalance on the argument because it seems that all this game is getting is negative press because of the progression system, which I don't think the developers had much of a hand in. I think this could be a publisher thing here. And we're shitting all over DICE who've worked incredibly hard to create what is a fun, probably one of the best Star Wars fighting you gotta, games. You gotta stand, yeah. you gotta you know, you got to draw a line in the sand at some point, and you got to stand your ground. Like, Tell them. You know, sure. Like, <laughs> if you are, if you're willing to, you know, continue supporting this kind of activity, fine. Go out and spend your money on this. If you're not, if you want to see this, you know, stop. If you want to see this kind of activity end, I mean, the only way to stop it is with your dollars. And if you go ahead and buy it, you're you're supporting the decision. If you st- don't buy it, then you're supporting the, you know gamers saying no this is too far you've gone too far with this for sure i, I understand I'm just, you know dice i'm yeah. sure there's a, a, a bunch of really nice people that work at dice but they are involved in a real fucked up situation and i'm sorry sometimes you know i just wonder opinion, if the average I gamer buying this is irresponsible i just wonder if the average gamer who's walking into gamestop and sees star wars this christmas is even aware of the progression system 
That's I mean, just they might be this thing made national news. Yeah, this is big news. Yeah, it went CNN. It had the most uh, downvoted comment on Reddit ever. Yeah. yeah. In the history really? of Reddit. Uh, it was a response from Whoa, one of the I, I don't think he was a dev, was it? Was it a dev? It was a community the, uh, manager. Community manager, and it got like I think it's like over like one or two million downvotes right now. It's the most downvoted thing in the history, his response. Um, Gary, you're fucking irresponsible, and that's what Revolver <laughs> has decided today. I Shit. accept the response and I'll enjoy playing Star Wars in spite of it. <laughs> Yeah, I, I would definitely agree that it's a it's a publisher thing, in my opinion. Um, sure. Yeah, hundred percent. Sometimes when you want to get a game published, you got to roll with the punches and do what the publisher says. They can rush your game, they can delay your game. I mean, they can they they're publishing your game, you know. So you gotta you gotta do what they say. It's yeah, the way it is. I, I love Star Wars, and you know, I heard about this in passing. I'll probably check the game out once. I find out exactly what they're going to do as far as microtransactions in the future. But I love Star Wars. I can't wait to see what it's all about. All right. Was that was the intro. Only 25 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> so we need. That's, that's quick for us. Normally it's 45, 50 minutes in and we're still talking Destiny. So that was yeah, a record. Yeah, we had to get through it. We had to get through it today. Well so done. would you like to introduce the Game of the Year discussion, Mr. Diaz? This is your brain um, chart. I'm more than welcome to. It's it's I think it's a collective, it's a hive mind. I think whenever we decide something mm-hmm. on Revolver, it's it's kind of like a Stranger Things hive mind thing where we kind of get together and collectively slope towards the uh the same goal. What we've decided is that we want to whip through um kind of like a a victory tour of the game of the year nomination categories, have a look at what the game of the year awards have suggested um, and take our views on them. So we're going to do a kind of a, a, a flavoring of those, I think about six or seven categories, maybe a little bit more. Um, and then we're going to round off this week's podcast with a revolver decides game of the year. So we think we've got far more knowledge, inclination and expertise than the industry experts who've pulled these shitty lists together. Agreed. And, yes. and we're going to, we're going to use these expertise. To, There's no uh, Yobo uh, on this list. We're going to mansplain it and decide with pure yeah. testosterone. Um, that's what we're doing, mansplaining. Game of the year. We're going to spray our male testosterone all over your earbuds. <laughs> um, so, you know, open them wide because because here it comes. We're going to kick off with best game direction. Um, I'm going to the nominees go through, are. Yeah, I'm going to go through the nominees. Um, it's Horizon Zero Dawn by Guerrilla Games, Resident Evil Seven Biohazard by Capcom, Super Mario Odyssey. By Nintendo, Legend of Zelda: Breath of the Wild by Nintendo, and finally Wolfenstein 2: The New Colossus by Bethesda and Machine Games. What do we think? Best game direction, Resident which Evil was 7 the most Biohazard. cinematic. Resident Evil 7: Biohazard. Uh, game direction. Now, when I look at the other uh, nominees, possibly barring The Legend of Zelda, which does have similar games in that vein, Horizon Zero Dawn very similar to The Witcher. Wolfenstein is something that we've we've seen time and time again. But Resident Evil 7 what? changed the direction. Spoken it's like first... a man who hasn't played Wolfenstein. Listen, no, <laughs> what I'm saying is Wolfenstein 2, we've seen that before in Wolfenstein. Of course, it's an updated version with more going on, but Resident Evil 7, the game direction completely changed from the franchise. That's the argument I'm making. Good Every Lord. other game here, even Mario Odyssey, we've seen Mario's before in that vein and in that style. So for me, the, the game direction changed so much for me. Wait, I don't think Resident that's what we're talking about here. Okay, so I think I think we might have a misunderstanding of what the actual category is. Direction, I think they're they're specifically talking about the not the direction that the series has taken because it, it's not necessarily like Horizon Zero Dawn isn't part two of a series, right? We're talking know, about yeah. the actual direction that was taken by you know the the development team. And that's why I said like with Horizon, The Witcher, to me that game direction is. Kind of copied and pasted from The Witcher. It's Are almost we talking more about like cinematics than gameplay. I think the whole like. I think you mean sandbox. Yeah, I, I like mean just the general, general sandbox going yeah. around questing, open world. It's it's et something that, in my opinion, I've seen before. And so for me, the game direction for the other four I nominees. Mean, if, if that's the direction you want to take with direction, which I don't think is really what they're going for here, I gotta say, Legend of Zelda is the, a completely new direction for any game and it, it wins but i don't think that's what they're going for I, I i honestly think they're talking about like cinematics and story and and voice yeah. acting and you know like a, like the director of a movie but right. we got those categories you got story you got voice acting you got all that stuff so this has to be something different and for the people watching and listening we're going to get into some shit today we're going to disagree and we're going to fight this ain't going to be like last week 
Fuck that shit, Briar. I say direction is what I say direction is, All right. and it's a new Well, then direction. you're wrong, because, oh. yeah, okay. I mean, Resident Evil 7 took a completely different direction for the series, but Legend of Zelda took a completely different direction for the industry. They changed what open world games are like. That's why I said barring Legend of Zelda. And see, and they also changed the way Legend of Zeldas were played as well. Completely. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, 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 there's nothing like it. I mean, um, no, if, no if open I, world game is going to look the same after Legend of the World, Legend of if, Zelda. If I'm and looking see, at it from Beastly's yeah. perspective, Legend of Zelda. If I'm looking at it from Briar's perspective of like you know, like direction, like director of you know a film or you know the game, I'd have to Wolfenstein too, hands down. Yeah, got you. Okay, hands down. I, yeah, and like I said, you know, when I was trying to make the argument, the only game other than Resident Evil that I could even see making this okay. argument would be the Legend of Zelda. But unlike you guys, I didn't right, beat Gary that has game. In the, it and is clarifying. It, what exactly this category means. As, uh, in, as adjudicator in this, whenever we get into a debate here, I'm going to refer back to the description for the category. Best Game Direction is awarded to a game studio for its outstanding creative vision and innovation in game direction and design for the title. Okay. So I think we're going to go with, well, for me, personally, I'm going to, I'm going to have to back Briar and say Legend of Zelda Breath of the surprise, Wild. Surprise, surprise. I'll me, back you too, Briar. Give me that knife. <laughs> for me right if we're talking about like what's going on creative, here. if we're talking about creative vision and innovation in game direction to me resident evil 7 is innovation for the series but it's not innovation for games outlast was doing that well before no, resident evil was they're both survival horror they're survival yeah. horror first person survival horror in my opinion resident Breath evil of the was Wild, vr survival horror the first time that was ever done in a full-fledged game the I first time you ever played seen... a game like that We've and it was unbelievable. Before. I beat that. And see, I can't really give my full opinion on The Legend of Zelda because I only played about 10 or 15 hours of it. And that's why I feel like you guys could be chunk. right in that. Say what? That's a significant chunk. <laughs> 10 to 15 think, hours of a game best, I think is enough to give you impressions of a game. I think Breath of the Wild puts up a, a good fight here because whilst Resident Evil 7 is a great game within its franchise, in my opinion, Breath of the Wild is a great game just full stop across the industry across generations it's something that has taken the open world genre and completely revolutionized it and i think we're going to see ripples of it for years to come it's not just an assassin's creed or a horizon zero dawn clone in my opinion horizon zero dawn has got a dog in the fight for some later categories but it's not best game direction by a any mark of the you know same as wolfenstein i don't think is is great direction it's definitely got a lot in it, but but you know it hasn't innovated the first person shooter genre in the same way that Zelda has. I mean, Wilson, yeah, you so haven't. I would, uh, I would agree. I would agree. What would you What would you say, Wilson, on this? Oh, like I said, since we clarified it now, I mean, it would definitely have to be Legend of Zelda: Breath of the Wild. Like I said, that's kind of why I broke it down in like two different ways. Um, I I think it completely it took aspects of Ze a Legend of Zelda that made it good, and then it tried new things and made some improvements in my opinion like just a lot of improvements like everything was an improvement <laughs> i mean the amount of time that you can spend in that game compared to any other zelda game and try to 100 percent it like you're gonna be there for a long time um i could 100 percent you know my favorite zelda link to the past in five hours you know, if I wanted to, like, which is no feat, you know, it's no speed running strat or anything like that. That's just in comparison to previous Zelda games. So Breath of the Wild. I mean, with Breath of the Wild, we've played open world games before, but I've never felt freedom like I do in Breath of the Wild. Like if I see yeah. something, I can you just go, go to it. And it's mm -hmm. not just a bunch of little markers on my map that I'm just kind of constantly like either you know fast traveling to or you know just make it a beeline for it's this sense of exploration that they just absolutely nail in breath of the wild that i don't think any game's ever done as well before um it, it's it's stupendous and beastly i fucking love resident evil 7 biohazard um but just the that game is an amazing resident evil game it's, it's an amazing, amazing game, VR period, game, to me. Yeah. But it, 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 when you put it like in this category up against the, uh, Breath of the Wild, I just it's not even close to me. It's it's Breath just too wild. It's not enough. Yeah, yeah. I, I can I can understand and respect. I that. would put Resident Evil Seven in second place, though, over all the other. 
for game direction. Um, yeah, I, I could I could second that. I think I think it is a good second place. I mean, Horizon in the chat. I mean, the chat have been coming up with some some great points here. I feel like Horizon does co- take a lot of the uh, cues from Far Cry, something like Far Cry Primal. I feel like it was it was close if you think about it. You know, not narratively, but game direction wise. Um, Super Mario Odyssey again draws on the cues from 64 and Sunshine and evolves them and takes mm-hmm. them forward. Um, Wolfenstein 2 doesn't do anything new per se, but it, it does what it does in an incredibly immersive way. And we'll get into that. Yeah, I think I can definitely side with Res Evil 7 taking the second spot, but it has to be Breath of the Wild winning. So is this our revolver deciding for best game direction? We I have think got. So. Yes. I think we're, we're all good with that. Yeah. We, we don't need to do like a top three. We could just do a top one, right? Top yeah. one. Yeah. That's I think we'll we just wanted to make sure that these categories. Resi seven was, was recognized because I, I can take second spot. About it. I, I think, I think it's a, it's a deserved second slot too. I mean, num- depending on how you look at it, number two can be more fun than number one. Sloppy second. It's the next category. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> okay. So I'd like chat as well to, uh, to come up with some predictions. So while we're reading out these nominees, if you guys want to throw up your ideas, it'd be great to reflect back on that with, yeah. during our conversation. So if you're here live, we'd love to hear it. Moving into best narrative and story. The category is described as for outstanding storytelling and narrative development in a game. So this is outstanding storytelling and narrative exclusively. Hellblade, Senua's Sacrifice by Ninja Theory. Horizon Zero Dawn, also Ninja Theory apparently, but John Gonzalez. Um, Nier Automata, Yoko Taro being the director by Platinum Games. What Remains of Edith, Edith Finch, sorry, by Giant Sparrow. And finally, Wolfenstein 2, New Colossus, Machine Games. What do we think here, chat? Guys, what do we want to kick off with? For me, it's really between Hellblade and Hellblade Horizon. And Horizon. Uh, I, oh. I loved Horizon, but... <laughs> And I, I in, I also I didn't play near or what remains of Edith Finch. So, but for me, what Hellblade did was they literally, in a video game, changed my perspective on the world. They changed the way with that narrative that I view mental illness. Like it was that impactful. And Wolfenstein Two, the narrative is so much fun that I'm actually having trouble going back to it because I don't want it to be over. Damn. 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 Shit. <laughs> Wow! I'd say I, I have to echo, man. I feel like I'm just like sitting there, just circle jerking Briar. But this Hellblade for me was a spectacular experience. It was a great game. It was a, a good, solid ten hours that I played through and enjoyed. I say Wolfenstein to me is the better game in terms of narrative. Like I don't know, for me, it, it did more of what I wanted from a game. In that, you know, I keep saying the quote to Briar. I feel like a fucking freight train. You do the the way that the story, the way the the way they direct the cutscenes, the way that the actors, the voice acting, the um the 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 what's the mocap, everything about it, the way the the music, the rock music starts to build during the cutscene and it crescendos at the end of the scene when you're just about to go back into the action. There's there's no other story that that I've been rushing through apart from The Last of Us. Actually, the last game that I had this was The Last of Us, where I just wanted that gameplay segment over. Game. Well, I just wanted the gameplay over so I could get back to the next bit of the story and just have the narrative drive me through. Um, it, yeah, that's, I you know, give other people a chance to pop in. But for me, Wolf 2 is my clear winner here. For, for me, the, the two that I have to decide from will be Hellblade to New Sacrifice, which like Briar, like uh, Gary uh, Wilson, did you play this game as well? It, no, um, but I've seen I've seen a full, uh, full playthrough of it on stream. It, it was unlike anything I'd ever played before. It wasn't revolutionary, uh, you know, per se in gameplay, but from perspective, it totally was. Uh, to be this person who had this illness, this mental illness, and you felt it, you know, for the first time in your life, you you kind of understood what it was like to to have, you know, these type of mental issues and have voices in your head and people talking to you and understanding, you know, that it's just a horrible situation to be in and you really feel for this character and you're going through this world and seeing things in a certain light that might not necessarily be true. And that really was amazing to me. But for me, my choice in this category, because I didn't play Wolfenstein or what remains of Edith Finch, I think I have it, but I haven't played that. I played the beginning of Nier Automata, but my wife couldn't beat the first boss. So I, I stopped with her, but uh, horizon zero dawn is my choice here in narrative and story because Aloy's story for me 
I held on to it. It was meaningful for me to watch her come from being this child, this outcast, and understanding the weight that she carried on her shoulders. Kind of reminded me of the Naruto uh, anime. She was really an outcast. People didn't like her, and then she rose to the occasion. She she fought against all odds and basically became the savior of her people and and almost of the, the world in a sense in this game. And for me, that was a very um, powerful and heavy story to observe and everything she went through when i played through that game it had meaning for me i'm not talking about the side quest i'm talking about the main understanding what was going on around her and really the way that this story was told it was a big lie it was technology that was turned into religion and to me all that melded so well in this story it made such a great a great game that really could be an awesome film for me when it comes to story definitely it would be it would definitely be horizon zero dawn So I guess for me, it was kind of a toss up Hellblade Horizon Wolfenstein. And after looking at the three a little closer, um, Wolfenstein's great. It is a fantastic story. You are on the edge of your seat the entire time. It is the Quentin Tarantino cocaine roller coaster ride that you would expect. Like it is fucking action packed and it does not disappoint. But it's not the first time a story like that's been told to me. Um, Horizon Zero Dawn, um, probably out of these three games, the character that I was the most attached to, um, the most relatable character, um, loved her story, loved her overcoming, you know, all the odds against her, stuff like that. The, the setting, the universe, absolutely loved it. Absolutely. And just very intriguing to me. Um, but then I look at Hellblade a game that I haven't played, but I've seen a full playthrough on stream and without even playing the game, just watching the full playthrough of it probably impacted me more than horizon or Wolfenstein too. So with that being said, it's, it's gotta be Hellblade in my opinion. I I agree with Wolf. It's gotta be Hellblade. It's an incredibly impactful story and it's told in a way that I think techno, Techno- the way they bring technology together with the story and they use it perfectly in sync. I mean, it's it's hard to put that game down and not find out what the next thing is, right? It's you you I'm so I'm so drawn to Senoa, but I'm also I'm also feeling like what is going on in her head, like much more than I think any other media could have could have really provided. It, it's so, insane, you know. It's just, it's outstanding. I would have got back uh, behind you with Senua's sacrifice until I played a game that we're going to be discussing later. So I won't go into it now. But Doki Doki does mental health better than Hellblade, and I will get into that later in the the further categories. At the moment, seeing as BC went Horizon, I went Wolf Two, and we've got two votes for Hellblade. Hellblade, well, Hellblade seems like wins. they've they've got the title. So in the event that Hellblade have got it. I'm going to switch my answer to Nier Automata just because I like the story and it doesn't matter anyway. But Hellblade have got that one. And <laughs> we'll, we'll chat do have, Hellblade uh, in uh, the number one slot and then a tie between Nier, Horizon, and Wolfenstein <laughs> for number two. <laughs> That's um, some serious chat, shit. Chat, um, just to reflect back on that topic there, chat were very heavily behind Hellblade themselves as well. There were some, nice. some other topics in there, but I guess uh, the, the universal voices Ooh, yeah, spoken. Yeah, they were behind and, uh, Hellblade. Hellblade has got that. We're going to move into our next category now, um, which is best art direction. So chat, listen up for your description and tell us what you think. This is for outstanding creative and or technical achievement in artistic design and animation. This is exclusively around what the game delivers from an artistic perspective. What was the, uh, the pushback there? So we've got number one, Cuphead by Studio MDHR Entertainment. Number two, Destiny 2, Bungie Activision. Number three, Horizon Zero Dawn, making a, an appearance again, Guerrilla Games. Number four, Persona 5, Atlas. Um, number five, Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. And for some reason, this has six nominees. We're going to have Little Nightmares by Tarsier Studios. So what do we think, guys? I'll go first Best here. art. Little Nightmares, it just reminds me of Tim Burton. Uh, I want to give a ton of love to Cuphead here. Um because it is you know it's so different in gaming um and i mean it's just it's so original in gaming but it is you know really a throwback to like that 40s art style destiny 2 is fantastic it looks like more destiny horizon zero dawn 
I feel like they nailed it as far as creating a world um, that was unique, u- unique, but like it felt lived in. It felt it felt it felt right for the story they were telling in the world they had created. Yeah. Um, Legend of Zelda to me, it was beautiful. It's still like that that Nintendo ish art, though, is, you know, it, it wasn't what draw me to, drew me to Legend of Zelda. And I didn't play Persona 5. To me, it's it's got to be between uh, Horizon Zero Dawn and Cuphead for me. I actually was the one who snuck Little Nightmares in there because it stuck out to me as I played it, Gary. Rigged. Uh, and it was rigged. rigged. Yeah. Uh, it, it wasn't mentioned. And to me, that game had such unique art direction. But amongst the other five, it still didn't win. I put it in there for you guys to think about it. Uh, but for me... Watching Cuphead and, and, and seeing the, the uh, Let's Plays of it, it is unique. It's a beautiful game, um, and, and it's unlike any other video game I've ever seen. But for me, Horizon Zero Dawn wins this category. Um, the art direction in Horizon Zero Dawn is prehistoric and futuristic at the same time. Uh, these be- these machines in the game, they, they seem to be alive, but they still seem to be mechanical. Of course, you see the character design, the way that the characters look. Uh, you know, when, when Aloy is talking to people, the expression and the emotion that's expressed, it just blew my mind. It blew me away playing that game. Um, and that would definitely be my choice. To me, Destiny is more Destiny. The Legend of Zelda is a great game. But, you know, as far as the art direction, to me, it, it never really just blew my blew my socks off. So for me, it would be Horizon Zero Dawn. Wilson, do you want to chime in? Yeah, um, so I'm really torn here because, like, <laughs> best art direction to me, like, sometimes some of the best art isn't always the most complex. Um, it's really how it affects you. Art is so eye of the beholder, it's not even funny. So, we're probably this is going to be a tough, tough one for the four of us. Mm-hmm. Um, Cuphead absolutely stunning something different um i feel like as far as standing out and being different cuphead feels really good um legend of zelda i mean i kind of feel about legend of zelda about how you guys feel about destiny it was just more zelda to me um however it's really coming down to Destiny 2 and Horizon Zero Dawn for me. And it, the choices for Horizon Zero Dawn, I think you guys have all touched on pretty well. I don't really want to repeat what you guys have said, but I can explain why I think Destiny 2. Yeah, I'd love to hear that. Um, man, I, and I don't know if it's because like I'm a lore nut and I know a lot of lore behind a lot of these locations and I can look at things like on, uh, on IO and say those giant bones are Ahamkara, you know, the old dragons, the, the wish granters, you know what I mean? And I can look at, I can look at that city that seems to have rose out of the planet and say, that's the last place that the traveler's light touched. And I could see all these different things that they've put in. And like, even in like, even in destiny one, you know, but we'll keep it to destiny two. Um, just visiting these locations, going through space, seeing all this awesome stuff. To be honest, like that's kind of what I wanted from um, No Man's Sky, but just didn't deliver on that impactful level of, you know, space magic and things happening that you know we can't describe yet. And making a strong argument for Destiny, he, he sure is. Right? And maybe like, I'm too cor- close to it to really. Have one. <laughs> well, that's what I was going to ask you guys: is do you guys think that for me is because you guys know how much I love Destiny? You guys know I love the hell out of that game, and I guess I'm asking you: like, am I putting uh-huh. Destiny two above everything else because I like uh-huh. that game, or is it no. because like? Things like like Ikora says, like uh, you know, I find out the more things we find about the uni- find out about the universe, the more questions I have, and that's I how think, I feel when I'm walking around and seeing some of these locations. It, if your I don't perspective, know the lore. your perspective here, really makes me want to dig into the lore because I didn't know that you know they tied that that information that you got elsewhere into the game in such meaningful ways. For me, I run around in Destiny 2, and I don't know what any of this stuff means. So for me, art direction is, wow, you know, this looks nice, or wow, the character designs look great. But looking around the world and seeing what they've crafted and how it goes hand in hand with the actual lore that you've read and stuff that's steeped right. in deep, you know, deep lore, for me, that's that's amazing. 
and know, that really the, does it, the fossils like on io or you know seeing the the wreckage on like there's you're right you know like i think i'm too close to it to like kind of really realize that i spend all day in destiny looking at all these things that really do like they do have an impact or they they do draw into the story so like even though i might run past it a hundred times and i don't really notice it on the hundredth time mm -hmm. you know the first time it, it once you realize what you're looking at, you're like, oh, wow. You know, and like even like looking at the the wreckage of Exodus Black, like this is a story that we've been hearing about for three years and we finally got to explore it. And it's, you know, it's it's vast and it's it's pretty cool. You know, you've got me coming around. On Destiny I mean, too. or even on Saturn, I mean, the attention to detail where the Dreadnought released its uh, testosterone explosion all yeah. over the Awoken army. I mean, there's that that visible spot in the rings of Saturn. It's just, I don't know, that's my from, opinion. From my perspective, um, I can see why you guys have said that, but I can also see why you're all wrong because <laughs> Destiny 2 is a beautiful game. You know, it's great, but there's a lot of other games that are great looking. World Call of Duty World War 2 might as well have been up there for best art direction then because they've recreated World War 2 in a very realistic, very gritty, artistic way in the same way Destiny's created a fantastic planet. What I would say for this is, it's artistic design, expression, creativity. I think chat have got a great point there with Cuphead in the sense that Cuphead has has gone with a design and 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 they've delivered everything authentically from the the you know the the way that the um, menu comes in, the way that the the developer introduction um, videos come in at the start. Everything from start to finish drips art. That's actually not my game. My game that I'm going to go for here, and I'm going to be alone. I know I'm not going to win this category, but fuck you guys anyway. Persona 5. Persona 5, for art-wise, everything about that game, again, from the second you put that disc in and load it to the end credits, is artistically designed. The way that the, the, menus, the menu, the start menus, the way that the battle... You know that it's a turn-based combat system, but the way that you choose which attacks you've got, it looks like it's straight out of a comic book. Everything about it. For me, the Destiny menus are functional, but they're not, they don't add to the lore of the game. They're just square boxes. It's, it's, it, I don't yeah, think you can compare... Right out of Destiny 1. You can't compare good graphics with best art, in my art opinion. Art design, yeah. Well, it's I, more I just, than, well, that's what I was saying. The best art isn't... It's more than just graphics in Destiny 2. It's the world they <laughs> built. You know, worlds, multiple, because, you know, finding, you know, finding the... the the aftermath of a battle in the middle of the, you know, the basement of some place in Titan, you know, it's pretty cool. And it goes to show like, you know, there was a lot of thought to it. I don't think it wins this category. Don't get me wrong, but, but I mean, it makes you look at it in a different way yeah, for, sure. for sure. It's the attention yeah, to detail it right away. Yeah, me too. And when, when Wilson started to talk about that, I was like, wait a minute, that, that really happened on IL bones. What the hell is he talking about? You know, stuff that I don't even pay attention to. Now well, I want to go back and look. Cuphead, though. Isn't this Cuphead's to win? I, 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 think, like I think Cuphead would be Cuphead. fair, Briar. It's unlike any other game. There's never been anything like it before. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, like the most artistically creative thing that speaks to you the most isn't always the shiny Lamborghini. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like, And that's just from an art perspective. Like I said, there's... There's things that speak to people that you look at and you just might not get. Yeah. You know what I mean? Be, There's a lot of art like that that I don't get. Nova. But I think all four, five of these games are amazing. Um, to me, it two of them though, to me, stood out based on their art direction. That's like, Horizon Zero Dawn and Cuphead. Yeah, when mm. I first saw them, when I first saw them, I was like. Horizon Zero Dawn immediately drew me in, and Cuphead immediately drew me in. But Cuphead, just being so unique and being all hand drawn art, I think was really fun. And, you mm. know, the craziness of it and somehow fitting that craziness into amazing gameplay. You going I with Cuphead? Go Cuphead? I just, I feel like if you took a screenshot of all five of those games, because um, we're leaving little nightmares out of there if you took a, a screenshot of them all in in motion uh, in stop motion and looked at them to me the ones that would be immediately distinct that i can't mistake this game for anything else yeah. would be cuphead and persona 5 just my perspective on it persona 5 looks like an anime it, it's just it's nothing like another game the problem with for me with persona 5 is i didn't play it 
Right. Is, you know, yeah, no, I mean, it's, it's a fair hard for me to vote you for. You definitely make a valid point there, Gary, about it's if like you put destiny. all of them together next to each other, you make a pretty solid point. The horizon I mean, you could, looks you could pretty. Fool people. You know? you could, if you did some creative screenshots, you could fool people into thinking Destiny 2 and Horizon Zero Dawn are the same game. <laughs> probably. I mean, you could probably pitch, fool people into thinking Horizon Zero Dawn was um, Far Cry Primal. Destiny 2 was Halo. Uh, if you yeah. took no, it the right Horizon time. Zero Dawn, Horizon Zero Dawn had man. pretty great. I mean, yeah, it looked great, they built man. a world in there. That game looked amazing. They they blended it with technology. The you know the the creatures that were around the armor that uh, what's her name wears Aloy Aloy. I mean the 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 differences between towns and cities in that game, mm-hmm. like going and exploring old ruins, the, the way technology worked. Like I mean, it was pretty crazy. It they was, represented like, every race it, in it, that it game felt too. Original, like it, it didn't feel like the same idea of a post-apocalypse that I'd seen a hundred times before. Mm-hmm. It True. felt like an original look at that idea, and it was True. it was that in the story were what kept me going because the gameplay was fun, but it wasn't as fun as I was hoping it was going to be. It, yeah, you know, I was done with that game when I was done with the story for sure. Well said. Well, I think well we're going to have so, to we're going to have to come to I a think conclusion. Everybody chose here. something different, so we'll I'm going to change my answer to Cuphead. Cuphead. Oh. Wins. <laughs> You see, I'll concede Revolver Persona 5 to Cuphead. I'll concede it to Cuphead, Shit. but I would not concede Persona 5 to Horizon. So Revolver has spoken. Chat has spoken as well. Chat could have solved this for us without 15 minutes of debate because they had Cuphead but that's where the from the is. start. <laughs> well, I, I just think it proves that Chat know far Who more than we choose, do. Who did you choose, Gary? What did you choose? Persona. I chose I choose Persona failure. 5. We have a riot. Chat decided there's two for two, and chat went with Cuphead, so we got fucked, basically. Okay. Yeah, I saw that. Fucked him like right. Big Bird, Wilson. Nice job. Fucked him like Big Bird. <laughs> there you go. All right, next got, one. Next move. Go ahead. Best score and music. So this is this is actually going to be uh, quite a difficult topic because the two topics that are coming up both focus on sound and audio, but there's a distinction in here. So let's listen carefully to what the category is. So... Best score in music is for outstanding music, exclusion of score, original songs, or licensed soundtracks. So this is not the way that the game sounds, but the music itself that was used in there. The nominees are Cuphead, Destiny 2, Nier Automata, Persona 5, Super Mario Odyssey, and Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. I can't help feeling that BC snuck one in here as well. Is this another rigged category? No. No? All right, I'll let you go. Wait, let me see. Yeah, this I see six. No, I, I didn't stick one in here. <laughs> <laughs> That's all you, my friend. Rigged. All you. Rigged. Um, um, I'll go okay, first guys. on this one if you, if you yeah. don't mind. Um, d- hands down, and yeah, I must sound like such a fanboy. Destiny 2. I'm sorry, okay? And I'm going to tell you why, all right? After, and I'm, I'm going to give a little bit of the story away here, so I hope that's okay, just the beginning part. After the city is taken... And you are out in the wild. <clears throat> that sad music that plays when you're traversing through the mountain, working your way mm-hmm. to Hogwarts Camp. Yeah. I have never in a video game in my life felt more attached to a game universe coming off the heels of D1 and as anticipated, like as excited and as much as we are anticipating Destiny 2, it's going to fix everything. And, you know, we're going into the game for the first time. I have my hair stood so so straight up on end on my arms going through that mission and seeing the dead guardians laying around that were defenseless that didn't have their light and just it did a really good job of making you sad making you hopeful pumping you up and I, putting a putting a little fire under your ass getting you scared you know and, I, I remember that that track too and, dude, and it, it was very foreboding it's so good yeah. It's so moving. It, it makes you. I literally felt like I was standing in my guardian shoes on the brink of losing absolutely everything I've worked for. I own that soundtrack and I've listened to it all the way through a couple of times. And what's surprising about it is it's not only like it's not only a lot of music, but it's amazing difference in, in the styles of music. And it all when it's playing in game, it all fits perfectly. Um, yeah. You know, it, it just works. They did it. Excellent job with that score. For me, Destiny 2, I love it. And I think we, when we did the raid uh, last week, Briar, I, I made you know a comment about, God damn it, this music is just so hype. Let's go. So epic, know? yeah. 
so good. Uh, it, it's great. But I didn't play Cuphead. Near time that I have it. Actually, it was a gift from Joe, my brother. He told me, I want to buy you this Fuck game because it has one. He said, I want to buy you this game because it has the best soundtrack since Castlevania Symphony of the Night. And I was like, really? So he bought it for me. And I got, you know, the first 20, 30 minutes in, but Kate couldn't beat the first boss, so I stopped. I'm sorry, Joe, I will beat it. I, I didn't beat The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, didn't even get close, but I did play and complete Mario Odyssey. And one thing I'll say about that is the soundtrack to Mario Odyssey is almost as magical as the game experience itself. It's really hard to put this style of, of soundtrack into a category. You guys know what Mario sounds like. Uh, but it, it's uplifting. Not this one, though. This one's got a, some variety to it. Yeah, it's very uplifting. Uh, you go to New Donk City and you see the mayor and she's performed this song for you and you're just there taking pictures of yourself and doing selfies. It's so uplifting. It's so awesome. You know, the, the music when the bosses come down, I just, I told you guys after I beat that game, I haven't felt that excited and, and felt that magic, that wonder that I, I felt, you know, as a kid since this game. It's been so many years since I felt that. And part of that magic was was the soundtrack of this game. Destiny 2, don't get me wrong, is amazing. It's awesome. But there's there it comes in spurts for me. It's not, you know, every moment. For me, I felt like playing through Mario Odyssey all the, the music that went for particular parts of the game all matched perfectly with what you were doing. And and for me, that would be my choice. I think Mario Odyssey's soundtrack was incredible. Gary? So I've actually, I've kind of got three here, but I'm going to narrow it down. I'm going to briefly touch on two and then narrow it down to the one that I've got. Cuphead has to get a mention here. Cuphead was exceptional. The soundtrack was perfect. Like the way that they captured that era, but made it non-repetitive. Like they were just because you heard those tracks a lot. Because you died a lot. You know, yeah. you were just getting the same <laughs> track. True. But every time you went back in it, in my opinion, it was the music that kept the game. Because it was such catchy tunes that, you know, you do the boss 30 times and it'd still be good the 30th time, like the, the track. Um, so for me, Cuphead gets a shout out here, even if it doesn't win. Near Automata, um, great. The atmospheric music that you got there, to me, it took me back to some of the old Tenchu games. Um, the Japanese kind of flowing, mm -hmm. sort of, uh, what's the word? Kind of atmospheric, um, chanting, melodic sound. Great. Again, works perfectly for a game. The only game on here that had a soundtrack that I would, mm -hmm. and I have, got in the car and listened to just any time, going anywhere, Persona 5. Persona 5 music, I, I know you guys haven't played it, so I'm not going to win this, but I still got to, get behind the corner and some of the guys in chat have heard it the soundtrack's 110 songs seven of which are full vocalized tracks like proper tracks you've got like an album of music and this is like i'm trying to think of the genre that it is it's like um kind of like jazz bebop with a little bit of um kind of pop music to it synth sound it, it again these you could release them in the charts and they could just be chart songs they're they're that good quality like the i'm, main I'm seeing that in, in our chat too Persona life, life, 5, no questions asked. The, the song Life Will Change and the battle theme, when you hear them, they're just like, it's, it, the game oozes style and passion and, and you know creativity in every way. It should have won best art. I'm going to concede it here. It, it should win best sound. It's not going to, but it should. The, the game itself, like if you've played Persona, even if you haven't, Briar, I'd implore you to listen to some of the, the tracks. You don't need to play the game to listen to them. It will make you want to play the game because the music is that damn good in Persona. It doesn't. It's not like Destiny. It won't move you, but it will get your be your foot moving. Do you know what mm. I mean? You'll tap. You'll be like, man, this is this is a jam. Like this game is is like really that's, really good. That's another game that my brother Joe um, bought, played, and he told me months ago that it was one of his favorite games of the year. So maybe I should give that one a shot too, Gary. It sounds really awesome oh, the way you've been the, describing it. The game's amazing, but it's a two hundred hour sort of slog the music though you could listen to in like 45 minutes and have a great time so i mean just just, <laughs> just go with the soundtrack yeah, go with the soundtrack um yeah it's that's my um thing got, it sounds kind of going like, in three different directions here we got wilson on destiny 2 we got beastly on super mario odyssey and and uh gary you're on persona 5 and i'll be honest with you i can't make up my mind man like whatever you, you you can end it now briar I'm just, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna go with Gary. I feel like I want to go tap and jam, man. Let's you why don't you get married already there? today? I know, right? <laughs> what kind of shit is this, man? Beastly Every time Brian decides some guys, it's 
was going to say the exact same thing. Yeah. Shit. Right. I, I, mean, I feel like thing. if I say Destiny 2 here. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it'd be nice to see you. Destiny 2 will come up on the board for something. <laughs> how many, how many yeah. let me ask you this, out of those games listed, yeah. did any of them give you chills? Did any of them give you goosebumps at any time? Did any of them, yeah, like, Destiny it, it gave you the feels? Destiny 2 did. Yeah. Go with your emotions, man. Come over to this side. You, you, Wilson, more, you won me over from, Destiny 2. Okay, good. That's fucking oh, weird. Man. Fuck you, Gary. I'll say it first. That's fine. Shit. You guys can live together in poor taste. I'm quite happy with that. Not a problem. It's not a problem. Do you know what? Actually saying that <laughs> chat, um, early chat surge was Destiny 2. So I've completely take back what I said about our listeners. They've got poor taste too. I actually, they probably have. <laughs> They're listening to us here. Welcome so. to the Attack Podcast, where we attack, attack anything podcast. and everyone. <laughs> uh, next is best audio design. So this is a little different than best score in music, but we got uh, some similar names here, uh, some differences too. Destiny 2, uh, Hellblade, Senua's Sacrifice, Resident Evil 7, Biohazard, Super Mario Odyssey, and The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. If this is to go to Hellblade, Senua's Sacrifice. Hellblade, Hellblade's my choice. I, I don't even know like how it uh, could go any other way. Yeah. So this is in-game audio and sound design. So how the game was pulled together and the way that audio was used to contribute to the story. Yeah, Hellblade. Uh, let me just say this real quick. Hellblade is the only game I played all year with headphones on the entire time. Yeah, you uh, absolutely should be wearing headphones. You, you, play you can't play it on a television. You can't play it. The sound bar, none of that works. The way that they've designed the sound around this game and the things that are going on in your head and around you. Uh, I don't see how anything else will even compete in this department. Hellblade, a senior sacrifice. It was just incredible to hear and to be in this environment and to constantly be spooked and be questioning yourself. And it was all done through sound design. Really nothing else, in my opinion, can even compete with it. And I got every other game on there. So I mean, I feel like we could discredit the other nominees. Like Destiny 2, again, I don't believe that the audio design... I mean, there's footsteps in PvP now. I don't think there's discredit them. I think Hellblade was just so fucking yeah. so good better, that yeah, it just, yeah. like, it you win different. because you fucking nailed it. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody else yeah. did a good job, but you yeah. you were that lady who finished the fucking ultra marathon like 20 hours before everybody else. Yep. Yep. <laughs> like, All everybody right, else did a great it, job, but you fucking killed it. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I love the sounds Gary. of the guns and stuff in <laughs> Destiny 2 and For the sure. enemies and things like that, but, like, the. There's no comparison. Yeah, Hellblade, Resident Evil 100%. being in VR, like the sound design was almost as impressive as the levels, yeah. but Hellblade. Yeah. It did something different with sound design, something that we hadn't experienced before. Resident Evil was great, atmospheric. You felt like you were there. You could hear things around you, but other games do that. Hellblade did something totally different. Uh, you could hear slight whispers, and you you know, you know look to the side like, what the hell was that? And then you hear this person laughing at you when shit's going wrong, and you make the wrong decision, and then you got these voices talking shit to you. It was just um, it was something different, something special. And this is the first category where chat have you near, na- well, unanimously said Hellblade. There's not one person yeah, that disagreed. So I think no, this it's is so America. clearly the answer here. This will be the easiest category by far. Yeah. Next All one right. I think is actually pretty easy for me. Best performance in a game. Uh the nominees are Ashley Birch for Ally Alloy in Horizon Zero Dawn, Brian Bloom as BJ Blazkowicz in Wolfenstein 2, Claudia Black as Chloe Frazier in Uncharted The Lost Legacy, Laura Bailey as Nadine Ross in Uncharted The Lost Legacy, and mm. Nina Jurgens as Senua oh, in Hellblade. Two. Oh, so, shit. to clarify before we dive into it, this is Best Performance. This is awarded to an individual for voiceover acting, yes. motion capture, and or performance capture. Yeah. Um, uh, I, I didn't play Uncharted The Lost Legacy. I have heard both of their performances are phenomenal. Uh, and the only reason I want to play that game is to see that. Uh, but for me, it's got to be Alloy. Uh, I thought that uh, Melina Jurgens did a great job as Senua. Her performance was not what was driving that for me. It, it was the for experience. Yeah. Alloy, it was definitely Ashley Birch as Alloy. She, I was completely convinced... The interactions she had with other characters were convincing. Uh, like I never thought about who's acting. I never. It was just this is alloy. She nailed it. Oh. I would I would agree to piggyback what you said, Briar. Uh, hands down, it's you know I, I pronounce it alloy. I know it's, it's alloy, you know, tomato, right. tomato, right. Or whatever. Uh, alloy to me was 
the most relatable character, the one that I felt the closest to, and we've kind of talked about it in the past before, when your main character is the female, I get super protective or whatever. Yeah. Um, so <clears throat> I really enjoyed it, man. Um, I think, hands down, like you said, she had a very believable uh, performance. Like, you legit felt like she was talking to someone, and, like, the way that they put a lot of the dialogue together, too, because... Man, sometimes emotion. that can just break the game if the mm -hmm. audio is even slightly off. And I don't mean like mouth to subtitles. I mean like the when you speak to someone and they speak back to you, it literally felt like these conversations were being um, – that they it were actual conversations organic. being yeah. – Yeah, they felt organic. Boom. Her, her Perfect. The intonation of her voice just felt natural. Like it, Soothing. It, yeah. it didn't feel like she was acting – it felt she was reacting to what mm -hmm. Higgins just said mm -hmm. to her. What she sarcasm, just said. fear. Well said. Yeah. Well said. Yeah. Was, on top of that, it was very soothing as well. So uh, I need to break up this little Horizon Zero Dawn circle jerk. Uh, it's not going to win again, but I'm going to have to take uh, a different <laughs> angle. I'm sorry. I'm always the fucking devil's advocate. I'm not picking here. Horizon. So uh, you know, okay, basically, no. you crack on then. You know, you lead. You lead the spearhead. Go for it. What's the best Horizon Zero Dawn, I agree with you guys. It was great. Um, and, and and watching Ashley Birch um, perform as Aloy was, you know, really, it was fun to watch. And I enjoyed all the amount of emotion that the characters had during those cut, those can't even call them cut scenes, conversational pieces. It didn't matter what was going on. You could see the emotion, the expression in these characters' eyes. It might be a, you know, a very traumatic experience and, and they would look afraid as they talked or their voice levels would change or they'd laugh and make a joke. I thought that was great. But uh, Melinda Jurgens uh, as Sinua, that to me was a performance. After I got done beating that game, I had to go on YouTube and you know Google and find out who this woman was. Uh, for me, her performance meant more to me than Aloy's because it wasn't this supremely beautiful woman. She, she showed that she was vulnerable. Uh, her performance was she was afraid all the time. And then she had to change that and channel anger and, 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 and go out into the world. And it just felt so much more real to me. Uh, and, and, you know, seeing her go through all these emotional roller coasters that she was on, dealing with these inner demons and dealing with outer demons and, and dealing with loss and love. And to me, Melina channeled all that perfectly in the game. I felt like everything that was going on felt real to me. Every conversation that was going on felt real. They felt like they had real weight to the conversations. But for me, it's like watching the movie Moon. It's one character to me watching this seminal character go through her inner challenges and her fight with herself and making it seem real. That experience seemed real because of that, that person. She played this role so well. And for me, that meant more to me, you know, as an experience than Aloy's character. So my choice would be Hellblade. Gary. So I could take it to deadlock and back BC on Hellblade. I think that, Melina did a great job. And what was interesting about that is that she wasn't a rehearsed actress in the same way that Ashley Birch was. She was actually the stand-in, just um, riffing lines. So she was part of the studio that was just really? brought in to be the, yeah, yeah. to be the stand-in that was taking lines. Wow, I didn't know and that. She did it. So to me, it was a much more natural performance. So I could definitely take that to deadlock. However, I'm actually going to go with uh, Brian Bloom um, as BJ. And there's a... <laughs> that, no, no, hear me on this, right? To me... He was what kept me playing. It's not just the cutscenes. If you go back and listen to Wolf when you're starting, and this isn't spoilers because this is like the first couple of levels, he's narrating all the way through, talking about his body failing him and, you know, um, you know the whole Caroline, lend me your wings kind of thing. Where he's just like, Caroline, I need your wings. Like the way he's gro growling through it. You hear that there. He's like, you know, we're not ready here. We've got to go through it. You hear him all the way through in the same way that, um, I don't know the voice actor, but the guy who played Geralt, he was so good as Geralt in The Witcher 3 that I actually bought and played about 30 hours of Victor Vran because he was the voice actor in that game. And I just <laughs> liked his voice that much. To me, BJ was, you know, he might be a caricature. He might be a jarhead. But he had me so he invested in that, that guy. I mean, yeah. He's yeah. more than He's, that. To me, the, the, that was in, in what was a relatively pedestrian shooter, a hyper-violent shooter. Doom's done that. Doom's done it better, in my opinion, the shooting aspect of Wolf. 
he was what kept me playing. You know, the one-liners, the the the, the speed. Yeah. You know, I'm not going to go into plot points there, but yeah, I, I could back Molina certainly. But to me, I've got to shout out Wolf too. And you know, the fact that again, I I respect what Machine Games did as a studio. It's not loaded with microtransactions and DLC, and it's not got the sales that I think it should. Wolf Two needs more accolades. It's a fantastic game, and, I agree and with Brian you. did a great job. Uh, when I when I look at this though, and I'm looking at just the performance, I'm not I'm not looking at the writing, the story. I'm not looking at any of the, you know, anything else. Ashley Birch, I think, just she disappeared into her character better than anybody else. And she's won it because it's two for Ashley. Yeah, it's, so you, you guys got, win by default. You win by mm. default. I've uh, I could I could I could have saved it and taken it to deadlock, but we've got a lot. I mean, if we look at if we look at chat. Um, chat were pretty much um, mixed between Hellblade and Horizon, so I think they echoed the the intelligent people on the podcast and not the British troll who who went with BJ. Just because <laughs> BJ, way to go, guys! No, you made a good argument. Dude. There is like, nothing. Um, I I don't think there's a loser on that list. I think Brian Bloom. That is a character that's got to be hard to play because, like you said, he is this kind of. You think he's going to be this meathead, but there's actually depth there. And to pull that off in the ridiculous situations he's got to do it in, <laughs> he does it. And he did it in the last game, and he did it again this time. I think he did it even better this time. I don't think I don't think there's a loser on the list, but the way I felt like Aloy, like, be, she became a character for me. I, I, I honestly think you could go any of those directions. So, and I, I just don't know enough about Lost Legacy to vote for those games. Same. Same. Should we move on to ongoing game where uh, I think Destiny's got a dog in the fight here, which is interesting. Yeah. This category is awarded to a game for outstanding development of ongoing content that evolves the player experience over time. Um, Holy crap. Number one, Destiny 2. But I think we could potentially extend that to the Destiny franchise. I think that's mm -hmm. a fair, fair shout. Grand Theft Auto Online, Overwatch, Player Unknown's Battlegrounds, Rainbow Six Siege, and Warframe. What do we think? Best ongoing game, guys. Jack, do you want to shout this out? This is this is so difficult. It's such a weird, such a weird category. Well, for for me, it I played a little bit of Warframe and I loved it. I was waiting for Destiny to yeah. uh, talk to Wilson and 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 Kate and I downloaded it. I had a great time playing it, but I don't know enough about the game to put it in that category. I bought Rainbow Six didn't really like it after a week <laughs> so that's sitting around here somewhere PUBG is awesome but i'm waiting for the console version never played gta online really destiny 2 is incredible right and and i i bought all the future content it's coming overwatch's content is free everything for overwatch is free and so they just released a new character i downloaded it and tried it out yesterday that is it kind of makes things a little bit more enjoyable for me when you don't have to pay for something new. Destiny, everything that comes out is, you know, you got to pay to play it. And I kind of like that whole idea that you bought a game, we're going to honor that purchase, and everything that comes out new, you're going to get it for free. Well, so, it's not really free, is it? It's paid for by loot boxes. Well, the not, my, not by mine. <laughs> the generosity so, of others <laughs> pays for your yeah. experience. There so you for me... And I know that Destiny is probably going to win this category because I'm sure that a lot of us, other than PUBG, I'm going to go ahead and go with Overwatch. All right. Um, like, the thing, I totally respect your decision. Um, the games that I'm playing the most out of this category right now are Destiny 2, Overwatch, and Player Unknown's Battlegrounds. I have dipped into Warframe. I do appreciate Warframe for what it is, but Hugo made a good point in chat that Destiny 2 compared to. Well, maybe you can even throw PUBG in there as well. Destiny 2 and PUBG haven't really had as much time to develop as, say, Warframe has. Mm -hmm. um, evolve, I should say. So I have to go based off what Destiny 2 is right now. Gotcha. I can't hope that things are going to change in the future. I have to look at Destiny 2 right now. That's fair. Um, and as big of a fanboy as I am, like I want it to be a contender in this. But then I look at Grand Theft Auto Online. And I'll touch more on that later, more on Grand Theft Auto later. But the only thing that Grand Theft Auto Online has going for it right now is the role play community, which are mods that are not done by Rockstar. So technically, they're disqualified because Rockstar didn't do it. It's the player community that's making these mods for role play servers where people make characters and tell some of the most interesting 
unscripted stories you've ever seen in a video game and down to every minute detail. Um, Overwatch, you could say, I mean, if you call one character every six months content, I don't. I'd like a new game mode, some more new maps that don't suck like the one in the space station, which is awful right now. Um, <laughs> no, that's not nine into overwatch. <laughs> yeah. My, maps, maps and characters aren't content to me. It is a PVP based game, but like I, maps over characters right. equal gotcha. content to me. So player unknowns battlegrounds. I mean, they say they're adding maps and stuff like that. I love the game has a lot of replayability rainbow six siege. Absolutely not. Oh, no, that's on here. Uh, Warframe. It's good, now. it's good, but I don't know. Uh, Warframe, however, uh, if you if you like Warframe and you like the never ending grind of a video game, it is the perfect game for you. It is a never ending grind. Um, Why isn't Gary on this game? Expansion too. It is. I it just like got PBA a huge expansion. Though. Open world, I believe. It was like an open yeah, world expansion. I haven't tried game. it since then. I've heard nothing but amazing things about it. So Why for me, you tried it since then. I just Destiny 2, man, because I'm playing Destiny 2. Um, <laughs> we should all get together and try it out. Damn, are, you, are you hinting that I should just say Destiny 2 and get over with it? <laughs> Destiny 2. You done threw a fucking wrench in your <laughs> shit. Don't, don't get sidetracked, Wilson. Talking I'm right too here much, with you. Wilson, just say Destiny 2, all right? <laughs> right here, Wilson. Yeah. So we've got Overwatch and D2 so far. Uh, sure. Brian, do you want to go or do you want to round up? Okay, I'll go for it. I think it's a travesty. we just got to say that World of Warcraft is not on this list. Because oh, yes. I feel like it is realistically the best ongoing game and has been proven time and time again with subscription numbers that it's retained. I know Blizzard don't publish them anymore, but it was you know still in the, the six, seven million subs um, and gets more updates than pretty much anything else out there. So that being said, of what we've got there, I want to make a case for Overwatch. Um, and the reason that I want to make a case for Overwatch is in spite of what was said, I think on the ground, on the surface, yes... They don't do a lot of uh, content. So, you know, they, they support the seasons. They provide a great um, infrastructure for competitive play. They do introduce character balance frequently. Um, but, you know, they, they introduce character balance at the end of seasons so as not to imbalance the play during a season. So they close the season, balance the game, move on. They're consistently putting in new heroes when they need to. Maps are added ad hoc. But the reason is, you know, if you've got a good map, players don't want new maps. Look at Counter-Strike. People play Dust 2 forever. It's just Dust 2. Like Dust 2 is the only map played on Counter-Strike because it's a fucking good map. People just want a competitive base to play on. Where I think Overwatch wins the best ongoing content that evolves player experience is what they're doing for esports. So the Overwatch League is the first time a developer and a publisher and an organiser have got together to actually regulate and create a regionalised esport, which actually, Brian, you might have some experience into this, into this week's um, DCP guest so optic diesel um i think he plays for or has is in the team of, of one of the overwatch league teams from the united states I think the houston team i believe so what overwatch has done is 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 actually start to think about what you've always complained about um bro you've always said that i don't support esports because i can't get behind my team you know my local team my regional team you know team of guys that are consistent and solid so overwatch are setting salaries for players, contracts for players with medical and health benefits, what? regionalizing the team. So they're getting rid of all branding. So you can't go in there with like team um, Dignitas and team Incognito and team whatever. Optic. You've yeah, it's you've such got a, a small percentage of the player base, though. Like you can't not, I'm, you I'm, can't go saying, into a game store and say buy Overwatch and you could get 401k someday or like you know what I mean. No, no, like, no, it's I'm not, not going to happen. Saying, like I'm not saying that. I'm not saying you know you're going to have groupies. Overwatch has got a really good retirement plan. It's got dental. <laughs> yeah. it's got, uh, Overwatch, you're not going to have groupies on their knees with their mouths open waiting for you. I get that, but what they're doing oh, in terms shit. of evolving the player experience is creating an esports league where people can tune in and support like you know the the ohio fucking reach arounds or whatever they are um and and you know see what what they're doing and you know are they are they beating the connecticut donkey punchers maybe they are maybe they're not i don't i don't know Come on, donkey right. punchers i'm totally getting a t-shirt connecticut donkey punchers <laughs> All I'm saying is that I think they're doing more for the ongoing video game ecosystem and, and what they're doing for esports than any other game uh, on this list. And that's my case for Overwatch. 
Okay, so Overwatch it is. And, I, and we're very so. happy if you're able to uh, name every team, Gary. You need to name uh, every fucking got, team. We've got yeah, Brian here. We're yeah. waiting to chip Overwatch, in. I agree with Gary that Overwatch, the, what they're doing in, uh, with their league, I think is really great. And I think it's going to be great for not just the players who are playing in it, but for players who just enjoy Overwatch or players who or people who enjoy watching competitive gaming because they're really looking to revolutionary revolutionize the way competitive esports leagues are you know formed and curated and put together. I think that's really interesting and place to watch. But for me it's Destiny 2. Like clearly, right? It's like it's the game I play every day. It's the game I've been playing every day for 3 years. It's it's a no brainer here. Warframe, I think they did an amazing thing with Great. um with with their new expansion, but that world in that there's something about that game that just doesn't grab me the way that Destiny Two does. Destiny. When's the last time you played me. it? What's that? Before When's Destiny the last time you played it? Oh, yeah, we were kind of dipping our toes into yeah, it. We're playing before it Destiny this summer on PC. I mean, it plays um, wonderfully. It, it's yeah. so fast. It's so kinetic and. The loop and the grind is really fun, and it just it doesn't hook me though like it mm-hmm. like Destiny does. Rainbow right. Six Siege, I just don't have experience with. Player Unknown's Battlegrounds, I think, is the it's hard it's hard to look at past that game on this list, but it just doesn't offer breadth of experience to me that a lot of the games on this do. And I I got really addicted to Player Unknown's Battlegrounds during the summer, uh, but I dropped it like crazy once destiny 2 it's, came out it's kind of an enigma because like play PUBG. it has this like the blend of secret herbs and spices it in does. there that keeps you coming back because we're not your people that are coming back they're not coming back for the loot boxes they're not coming back for the cosmetics any of that shit so it's something back for them chicken dinners <laughs> going back for them chicken dinners and i think None what it is boys. is that it's it, it's people are kind of starting to subconsciously feel that um that skill get closer to the skill ceiling that I was talking about where they're, they're getting better and they're progressing in a video game. And I think that's part of the thing that like keeps you coming back with that. It is a lot of fun. It um, is. And Warframe, I'm with you, man. Like if I played more Warframe, it'd probably be a no brainer for me, but I just don't. And like you said, the, the lore and stuff like that just doesn't grasp me the way. D2 Fortnite is, is probably pulling some people away from that game too. I'm hearing a lot of, True that good things about yeah, Fortnite. That's yeah. all my kids play is Fortnite. They keep begging me to play it. That's Overwatch. Right. I, just, I just can't get past the building. competitive shooter. Um, but you know, it's just not my game. You know, what else can I say about it? It's just, it for me, mm-hmm. it's, I enjoy it when I play it, but it's just, it's not my game. And Grand Theft Auto Online, I don't know how this is on this list. It's crazy to me. It's Destiny 2 for me. It's <laughs> Destiny 2. So, World of Warcraft should have been on there. If WoW was on there, that would have been my vote hands down so what's interesting about this category is we've reached a deadlock um yes. and moving into our last couple of categories i think what we need to do is defer to the chat to decide sure. so we've got overwatch versus destiny 2 head to head we're gonna allow chat to decide from the first person that says either overwatch or destiny 2 there's gonna be a five <laughs> second window uh, and Holy whoever has shit. the most things there go so you've now Come on. Got Come on, Destiny Are we going to count to five once I see the first Overwatch or Destiny yes! 2? Destiny 2 wins. One, two, three, four, five. It's now in deadlock for chat. The next person that got Destiny, Destiny 2's two. won it. Destiny <laughs> 2. Ryan, you Destiny bots. Fucking Give rigged. something to some, somebody else. Oh Shit. <laughs> Destiny 2 wins by the rigged Briar Rabbit in chat. So for everyone that's leaving angry comments in YouTube, uh, direct them directly at Briar here. Beastly yeah, Briar. and I were innocent in this. Perfect. Okay, our last category yes. of the um, of the Game Awards before we go into Revolver Decides and we start slapping dicks and taking names yeah. is Best Independent Game. Now, what we mean by an indie here is for outstanding creative and technical achievement made outside of the traditional publisher system. This is anything that wasn't triple A. Yep. We've got Cuphead, Hellblade, Senua's Sacrifice, Night in the Woods, Pyre, and What Remains of Edith Finch. Now, this is going to be a difficult category because I don't know how many of us have played I've some played of these games. games. On this list. So it's going to be a quick one as well. We're going to need chat to help us out here, chat. So if you've played any of the indies here, that's Cuphead, Hellblade, Night in the Woods, Pyre, or What Remains of Edith Finch. Make a case in chat while we decide through it. 
Go for it, guys. What do you think? Best indie? Hellblade's the only one I've played. Cuphead. Yeah, I gotta go Cuphead. We've got Cuphead, Cuphead. I want to say Pyre because I've seen a lot of it. I haven't played it myself, but yeah, I have played a lot of Hellblade and Cuphead. Well, of shit, the two. it's back and forth in this one. Hellblade, Cuphead, mm. Hellblade. I think Skip it's difficult to separate Cuphead and Hellblade because I, mean, I think they're both so doing what different. they do. Yeah, They're yeah, doing it's... what they do great. You know, Each yeah. one is excellence in their own field. I question if Hellblade should be in the indie category, if I'm completely I honest. It, it is on the verge, right? It's like right on the border. I think it is. I don't know, man. It's right on the verge. I think it's it indie like in the Cuphead same way. Wins that... As per our uh, comments in the chat, I'm counting a tie. I, I feel like I feel like if if Hellblade is indie, then The Witcher Three is indie because that was self published by CD Projekt Red with a government grant from the Polish government to be able to produce that game. So that's kind of an independent thing. So they did it without a publisher. Um, I think Hellblade kind of falls into that category of double A, and I think it had support from a mental health trust and something else in its creation. So I think I got a swing Hellblade, uh, swing Cuphead on this one because it's a true indie. I like I like Ash what Ash said in the in chat. Cuphead yeah. is a fantastic video game. Hell played is an interesting story. interesting story. Ash wise beyond his years. Um, I like that. I think Ash he's how old is Ash? So we go in Cuphead. Um, Cuphead it is. Eighty three. Um, we move into our last category, guys. <laughs> this is it. This is this is the big boy shit. This All is right. where we, we game get filthy. of the year, and we we got some plans here. So we're gonna each give out our top five. Uh, we are running a little bit low on time, so instead of we we're, we're gonna rotate like, you know, everybody do their five, everybody do their four. I think we should just go through our top fives just to make it a little quicker, because mm -hmm. uh, we only got a half hour left. Then we're going to share by math what is Revolver's game of the year, and then we're gonna throw the math out the window and just fucking hash it out what the top five games of the year are. Yeah. So that's more like it. Tell us what are your top five games of the year. Number five is Hellblade to a Sacrifice. Number four is Resident Evil 7. Uh, these are all games I completed, so I, I can actually speak on. Number three, Horizon Zero Dawn. Number two, Destiny 2, the game wow. I played the most all year. And number one, Super Mario Odyssey, the magical experience. Just unbelievable. Made me fall in love with my Switch more than ever before. And those are my five. Uh, I'll go next. Uh, my number five is Player Unknown's Battlegrounds. I put so many hours into Player Unknown's Battlegrounds. I had a blast. I could play it by myself for hours on end. Uh, and it was a whole different game when I was playing with a team. Uh, I played a ton with you guys. It was, I just had fun with that game. Like, just over and over again, I loved it. Resident Evil 7 was, I mean, if there's a VR game of the year cat category, it's We both put that as number winner. four. Yeah. yeah. It, it was a phenomenal game. It, it, it was immersive. It was fun. Uh, there were some issues with it for sure, but I mm -hmm. absolutely adore that game. Wolfenstein 2 is just batshit crazy and super fun. It needs to be on my list. Hellblade Senna was Sacrifice. I described before, my number two, it changed the way I view the world, and that is worth something. Uh, but my number one, I think, is is an easy number one. It's without a doubt the best video game of the year was Cuphead. It just was a complete package. Every other game on this or anybody else's list I could find fault in, Cuphead, I could find no fault in. It is a nearly perfect game. I think big boy talk there. You can find fault in all of our games. Yeah, I know. <laughs> the hell is that? I find fault in your beard. <laughs> Shit. Oh. Ooh, oh. Oh. Life. God oh, damn, take it easy. Bro. I know oh, you're God. lying, Gary. <laughs> <laughs> the day that I can grow one, I'll uh, get back to you. <laughs> Just waiting on puberty. Wilson, do you want to uh, kick off the next one? Yeah, man. Um... Mine's going to seem a little odd um, at for my number four spot, but starting with number five, Cuphead. Visually amazing, beautiful. Shooters are awesome. Um, and this is where it gets a little weird, <laughs> at least for my number four category, because it's not technically a 2017 game. Um, but however, Grand Theft Auto Online in 2017 had a role play mod and servers added to it. And Without going off on too much of a tangent here, guys, like I don't expect this to really get much attention, acceptance, or praise from you guys or chat or anything. But from what those role-playing online servers have shown me is that there is a whole new world of video games and stories that you can tell yourself. You can tell them really well. Some of these guys are fantastic. I mean, there's been times where 
they'll stream three nights in a row. And at the end of the day, I can't wait to get home and see the continuation of the story that they're telling, you know, and a lot of the stuff happens on the fly. Um, very, very awesome. I feel like, you know, um, one of the biggest streamers in Twitch got started through that. Um, Sheriff Eli Thompson never streamed a day in his life. First day streaming over 50,000 viewers, you know, like, <laughs> Jeez. yeah, I mean, he got shouted out by Twitch at Twitch, you know, one of the, uh, really? main stages on Twitch. They're like, you know, he was right up there with, uh, being held in regards with Dr. Disrespect, you know, as far as popularity, like your first time streaming and you're averaging over 50,000 viewers. Like it's incredible. Like, so did you know, he get that, partners that's, just out of interest? Well, he's, yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. He's a, uh, I was joking. He he's a, pol he's it. a police officer in game. So there's real police that will pull you over. If you're speeding, they have radar, they have, the ability to search you, your vehicle, check for your license, registration, all this stuff. And he was one of the sheriffs, and that's why he was so popular, was because he was actually a cop in real life. So he okay. knows how to make a traffic stop fun. So it was like so, watching bad, you know, like cops when you had like the bad boys, bad boys, come on. Yeah. And it was just going there. No, it was, it was, <laughs> like we're, we're out and about with the law enforcement of Orange County, and you know, you'd sort of... Yeah, some of these stories patrol. that these guys have told have been more interesting than movies that have had a hundred million dollars thrown at them. Wow. 100%. I've got to check that out, man. Do you know what? I've, I do I've too. Heard I had no idea. Um, I'll, I'll I've send you guys happens. some some Please. links to some popular people who are doing it. But, like, uh, you know, off the top of my head, um, Mr. Moon's House, Thadrius, Selvik, um, Coolidge, uh, Classy Packs, any of those guys, um, check them out. They're usually Holy always shit. doing I, this. This is I mean, like a whole new world for me. You, I, you've kind of sold me on that as Game of the Century, and you're only on number four. What more okay, mystery? Okay, yeah, yeah, moving <laughs> along. Uh, Zelda Breath of the Wild for number three, number two, Player Unknown's Battlegrounds, and number one, drum roll, Shocker, <laughs> Destiny 2. <laughs> Fucking shill. All right, so um, <laughs> The God math. The I'm gonna show the math on screen here. I, I haven't. I haven't yeah, come in and dropped my five oh, my, obscure I'm sorry, titles. My bad. I read yours, so I, I already knew. <laughs> <laughs> so Brian's cheating already. He's getting ready to discredit them. He's looking at you know all the all the negatives in them. So two of them I kind of have to explain maybe because um, you guys might not be immediately aware of them um, in in the audience. Dear Angelica, I spoke about when I actually played it on Oculus for the first time uh, earlier this year. It's actually a 13-minute interactive visual novel in VR. What, for me, why it should be on Game of the Year is because it did something in VR that I've not had in many other ways. I mean, if I could put Google Earth on there, I fucking would, but I can't. It's not a game. Um, <laughs> Dear Angelica, it's blurring the lines between what's possible as a game. It told the story of a girl remembering the memories of her um, now-deceased mother, um, through the mo her mother was an actress and it was the movies that she was in but you were watching those movies take place around you it was painting um, a story in th sort of full 360 degrees around you above you below you the way that the sound engineering was carried out the way that you watched and slowly realized the story that actually this is her sitting on her mother's deathbed watching her mother die in front of you and man i get a bit choked up talking about it now i mean i'm a pussy really but it you know that was we know, Gary. deeply yeah deeply emotional because i felt you know but my mother's not passed away but I actually you know i felt like this could be could be mine anyway that's why it's on there it's 13 minutes if you've got a chance even if you haven't got oculus or vive you're not going to get the same experience but i'd say watch it on youtube and you'll kind of get the gist of that number four near automata um fantastic game needs no explanation number three man this game it came out of nowhere um free costs absolutely nothing it's a visual novel Doki Doki Literature Club on PC. If you get the chance to, or if you have, you don't need a good PC. This will play on a 10-year-old laptop. It's a visual novel. Download it. It's completely free. If you want to give the developers money, you can and you should. Um, it is a dating sim that <laughs> hides. It, honestly, it's a anime-style school dating sim. Doki Doki means like heartbeat or emotion literature club. So you are a young guy who is enrolling in a school club to meet girls and you go to the literature club because your neighbor convinces you there's three girls. Um, it's about a seven hour story. Two hours into the story, you realize this is not a dating sim at all. This is a dark horror and psychological terror game about mental health, depression, um, the dark spirals of what social anxiety can bring. And it has multiple endings. 
that spiral off based on the choices you make in the game. The game itself fucks with you because certain endings you can get where the game file intentionally corrupts, deletes your file, restarts you in a completely new and parallel timeline based on where you were. Some of the characters aren't there anymore for certain reasons, some aren't. I have never been more enthralled or taken back by a game. And this, to me, impacted the way I view mental illness far more graphically than Hellblade did. Um, The developer of it said that scary games are there because of the situation it puts you in, not because of what it shows you on screen. And how uncomfortable I felt playing this game, I've not had on on any other game that I've had. So if the game is free, how do you give money to the developer? What are you paying for? So there's two things you can do. You can donate to them directly. Um, it's a freeware, as in if you feel that their their work values your currency, you can give them money, indefinite amount, or you can download the concept art pack, which I think is $9, um, and you get some wallpapers, ringtones, screenshots, background art. Um, and Briar, yes, the, the, <laughs> I haven't actually got to the fucking um, in the game, but it is a dating sim. There is some risque, flirtatious stuff. I mean, this... Uh, Jokes aside, this game, when you put it up, gives you severe trigger warnings. Like, if you suffer from anxiety, depression, etc. Um, it's, yeah. If you can get through the initial taboo of it's a dating sim, you realise that it's fucking far more. Just to put in terms of popularity, this game came out on Steam at the start of November. It's had 20,000 reviews and is sitting at 10 out of 10 at the moment wow. on Steam charts. Out of I'm, 20, I'm going to try it for reviews. sure. Wow. It's it's a it, visual novel, so I'd say is it back for with, all ages or? Uh, do not do it if you have had experience, or if you're sensitive to um, depression, anxiety, stressful situations, self harm, suicide, um, anything that that's in that mental space. Um, and okay, also, my, if, my seven year old should be fine. All right. Perfect. Um, and and also, if you find dating sims a bit taboo or risque, um, again, I've not seen any of the fucking. There may well be fucking in it. I don't know. What it's the hell is dating for if you can't get to the fucking, Gary? What kind of so games was, do you play? That was my number three thing, uh, and it's a, it's a biggie. Uh, number two, Breath of the Wild. Number one, I've got to give it to Wolfie 2. Wolfie 2 was so good. So fucking good. As a game, as a pure game piece of, of entertainment, I think it is. It's so I think good. It Briar so said good. you're wrong. He said Cuphead is an easy decision, easy fucking choice. I'm happy to be wrong, but right. I think Wolfie 2 so is mine. That is our... Those are our individual picks. Gary has gone ahead and done the math. <laughs> and I'm going to bring up <sighs> what that actually says our game of the year is by the math. Then we're going to say fuck the math. No and more argue friends. this one out. Yeah. So here it is. Number one is Destiny 2. How? Game of the year, Destiny 2. <laughs> Number Rigged. two is Wolfenstein 2, The New Order. Number three is Legend, Legend of Zelda, Breath of the Wild. Number four is Cuphead. Five is Player Unknown's Battlegrounds. Uh, actually, there's a three-way tie for five. Player Unknown's Battlegrounds, Hellblade, and Super Mario Odyssey. Bullshit. <laughs> Number Sorry. eight is Resident Evil 7. Number nine is a two-way tie between Horizon Zero Dawn and WWE <laughs> Literature Club. <laughs> <laughs> fucking as good as Horizon Zero Dawn. So eat that so many What's happening? Number a two way tie for number eleven, Near Automata and Grand Theft Auto Five Online, the newest game from two thousand and nine. And number thirteen is Dear Angelica. This is fucking bullshit. This, One this that fucking to show you that Sometimes the math point. doesn't always add up. <sighs> <laughs> isn't always right. All right, so that's the math, and the scoring was, you know, like if you if you put a game on your at number one, you got five points. Number two, you got four points. Number three, you got three points. You, you guys understand, but we don't actually agree with this top ten list, right? This no, is just don't. Right. hell no. This is just this is what we decided. Arbitrary. This is the you're going to question maths now. Hell, yeah, fuck math, man. We arguing this shit out, cuz. <laughs> um, questioning Stephen like, Hawking and Bill Nye and all these guys. Bill Neil Nye is not Tyson a fucking would... scientist, okay? Yes, he is. No, what he's would not. Neil deGrasse you Tyson should, say right here? You can he attack say? Gary, but you cannot go after Bill Nye. Fuck Bill Nye. <laughs> Here's the oh. thing. Wolfenstein 2 is a fantastic story. I would argue the game isn't actually that great. Like, the actual act of playing that game... It's most fun if you put it on easy and you pretend it's Doom. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's I how I, I feel about fair. Wolfenstein 2. 
the the story is batshit crazy and absolutely everybody should go and play that game immediately but actually shooting shit in that gun game i don't know why they don't just take doom's gameplay and port it over to wolfenstein yeah, 2 and engine, fit the yeah. narrative so much better than the sneaking around trying to kill commander thing that they got going I have to agree with you because to me, I actually I switched it to easy um, midway through, not because I was having a hard time, but because I enjoyed the frenetic shotgun play. And if you put on the harder settings, you can't charge them with a shotgun because they'll like two tap you with their little like Mauser pistols. So for me, when I get so jacked up on a cutscene where they're like fucking ready to kill some Nazis here, and then you yeah. go walk out and you get two shot by one, you're like, oh, maybe I'm not. <laughs> if you put it on easy, you can just run through killing. What it keeps the momentum going, like you say. Yeah. I completely agree with that. Like if they had the rip and tear gameplay of Doom mm. in that game, I think it would just it would fit so well. It'd be so much fun. Uh, but I love that game. But I don't think it. I don't think it deserves to be anywhere the, game of the anywhere year. near the top slot yeah. just because it's not like the gameplay of it is not that great. Zelda Breath of the Wild, though. I mean, that's a tough one to deny. Destiny beat it though, see, bro, mathematically. See, Brian, you and I are. <laughs> We're on opposite ends of, ends of the spectrum here, and I might be crucified in the comments. Yeah. But Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, like all other Zeldas, I know critically are amazing games. But I never, ever really got into them like that. I would buy them because I was a teenager with the job to watch my older brother play them. Like uh, the old school 64 Legend of Zelda. Yeah. Majora's Mask. And, you know, I would buy those to let him play. Joe. And I'm telling the truth now. And so... With this one, you know, the Breath of the Wild, I bought it and I wanted to get into it. I wanted to, you know, experience it as, you know, in my mid thirties and see if, if if it was different for me. And after playing for a while, it still felt the same. It just didn't pull me in. And you're the same way with Mario. Yeah. So it's like when I hear you say this is an so easy, I'm kind way. of the same way with Legend of Zelda. But what I'm willing to see in Zelda that I'm not willing to see in Mario is how it changes the genre that it sits in. Mm. It completely expands upon everything that genre's been doing. Ubisoft has been harping that or killing that genre with like these world maps with a million different like locations mm -hmm. to go and see. It. You know, everything is just spelled out for you. What what I think is so uh, unbelievable about, about Zelda is the way that it takes this open world style game and just says it is actually now open world. You can go there, you can crawl up that mountain if you want to, you can do right. You can go, you can go and do and whatever wherever you do go too. You're going to be rewarded for going. Yeah, you there. can find things. Yeah, you know, like if you if you see a mountain, chances are there's some shit on that mountain that you want. You know, so <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I I saw that. You know, I was playing that right after I beat Horizon Zero Dawn, and I, I did see that, and I, and that's a respectable point. But sometimes you don't have to change the recipe if it's not broken. See, for me, for me, the it's, Super not Mario, my, it's not my number one. Super Mario Odyssey, to me, they mastered that genre. I think that, you know, they really couldn't do much more with that genre than what they did with this game. I think mm -hmm. that they pulled everything about almost every single Mario in history, and they pulled it in some meaningful way into this game and let us play with it. And, and to me, it just worked so well. I can't even imagine what they could have done to make this game better than it was when I played it. And it took me a while to actually, you know, I let my wife play it and beat it and told you guys that. And my daughter was goofing around. And one day I just sat down and I did it. And it was so rewarding to me. And I don't I don't think that Nintendo had to necessarily change the game with Mario Odyssey. But I think that they fine tuned the game with the open world platformer in a way that I don't think they could have gone much further in such a meaningful way. To me, that's why that was my game of the year pick. That's Respect. Fair. Respect. Yeah. That's fair. I don't know. I mean, for me, I, I'm going to catch a ton of hate with it again. You Mario Odyssey. I, I, I'm with Briar. I didn't, I didn't enjoy it. I can see why it's a good game. I can see why people enjoyed it. I personally had more fun in that genre with ukulele in terms of the collectibles thing. I liked the way that the little lizard moved more. I liked the fact that it brought in the classic kind of Atari-style retro right, games. Uh, and we don't have time but... to spend on ukulele here. Yeah, uh, I don't mean to interrupt you. They, they <laughs> fucked you up last week. Game. They <laughs> fucked him up last week for even bringing that shit up. Let me bring that shit up in here, cuz. Destiny Two has got no business being at the top of that list, though. And I agree. To me, I agree. It's I th it's a travesty that that's up there. I lo I love the game, um, but I don't. It didn't even make my top five of the year. 
Yeah, I would agree. I would like as much as I love Destiny 2 and stuff like that, like I got to take a step back and realize that you guys are right. And it doesn't really belong at the top of that list. Um, You know, (laughs) as fun as as fun as PUBG is, um, you know, it probably doesn't deserve the spot that it has either. Right. I'm I'm going to have to go with Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild for game of the year. Um. Once again, like, I mean, and I totally respect that, you know, Super Mario Odyssey, like, but man, I I think Briar just nailed it when he said, you know, it's a game where if you see a place, you can go to it. And to be honest, I haven't gotten that feeling since the old school uh, Oblivion. And even that had some limitations. Even when you say Briar, like, it's kind of a rough comparison because even Oblivion had some limitations as to kind of where you could go and what you could see. Horizon was like that too now. Horizon. Yeah, no, it wasn't. Yeah, but it was wasn't. It? Yes, I mean, it if was. You wanted, no, if you no. wanted to crawl up the side of a cliff, you had to look for a rope or a ladder, and if if it wasn't there, you had to go drag your True. ass around. All and right. In Zelda, you just climb that fucking cliff. Yeah, yeah. and like you said, you, you were you were most likely in the game. That's, you were most likely gonna be rewarded for it as well. Like sometimes it's cool to get to like cool places in the game, take it a little screenshot, you know, you get, you know, oh, it's beautiful and stuff, but it is also cool to get some in game loop from it. Mm-hmm. I mean, Legend of the Zelda. World as well, you've got so many ways to approach almost every scenario. You yeah. choose the narrative of the game. You can't do that in horizon. You follow a quest line. It's, it's just horizon to me is a well-told RPG. Breath of the Wild is a sandbox RPG from a triple A developer using one of their most beloved franchises. And it's done so well. Absolutely Can we just so. all agree now that more than likely we're going to decide that The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild is, is G-O-T-Y? No. Or Game of uh, the Year. I think it's uh, Cuphead. I think it's Cuphead hands down. Cuphead is a game that has no weaknesses. It is. The weaknesses are amazing. that we don't it think looks, it's Game of the Year. It looks amazing. It plays amazing. It sounds amazing. It's completely original in its ideas. It's Game of the Year. Everything you just described also applies to The Legend of Zelda and Mario Odyssey. It looks amazing. I would it argue that amazing. there's some serious problems with Legend of Zelda. The The weapon system where you're constantly having your weapons break is frustrating and just gets old super fast. So does dying over and over again, Briar, but people get keep good. coming back. Get good, scrub. Oh, shit. Well, get more <laughs> weapons then, scrub. <laughs> shit. Look. It's fun to beat people over the head with sticks. It's less fun when your stick breaks and you have to go looking around for another fucking stick. <laughs> you better, you better I don't pick know. the best spot to hit him with. <laughs> Cuphead yeah. puts a really interesting twist, and it is unique in the like you know the Metroidvania sort of style on boss battle shooter whatever. But Breath of the Wild is like nothing that followed it. You got, it doesn't matter about the art style on it. Cuphead does what it does in a new art style with a fresh vintage soundtrack i i can't think of another game that's done breath of the wild i cannot think of a game yeah you're right about that but cuphead was just perfect like (laughs) well executed i cannot i cannot i cannot think of an honest problem with cuphead but i mean it did not it did not revolutionize revolutionize like a category like yeah i can think of all sorts of problems with breath of the wild was it my favorite game of the year? No. But was it, did it revolutionize it like a genre? Probably. We'll have to yeah, see. I, I mean, I'm with you there. Come. I'm with you there, bro. And for me, but I, my, when I played Mario it, though, it's Cuphead. like it's, you know, the story didn't grab me. The characters didn't grab me. The world was interesting and fun, but like it didn't, it just, like I wanted narrative. I wanted, you know, I wanted a reason to continue playing it and it never gave it to me. Uh, Horizon did a better job of that than than Zelda. I mean, the, I finished Horizon because I wanted to know what was going to happen with Aloy. I wanted to know I, I, what the problem was in that world. It doesn't narrative it's the nuance. count for something? It's, it's the nuance of Breath of the Wild, though, and I think that's what we're forgetting now in reflection. To me, the story was told in the way that you approached the game and the way you played it. Mm-hmm. So I remember when it was a current game, we were talking about the way we found Korok Seeds or the way we defeated a shrine in like a unique way. And everyone had a different story. And that's what I mean about the different approachability. Like, I remember 
you know, hunting some of the dragons on the mountaintops, you know, when you're looking for the dragon scales to build the top end armor and having little experiences there or trying to track down the last shrines or, you know, when you first discovered the master sword, when you're going through the Korok forest, and you're trying to follow the, uh, the embers through there. To me, there was lots and lots of discovery and the theme, the story for me was discovery. If there was quest markers everywhere and a narrative story that was strong, I don't think it would have worked and it would have taken away the fact that I can approach the shrines in any order or do none of the shrines, or anything else there. And the more you script that game, the more you strip away from the sense of discovery that that game had. It, so it, it you're delivered saying that on the, the ambiguity of the game was a huge draw for you? Absolutely. Uh, no, I don't think any one person could play that game in exactly the same way as someone else without trying to. That's one you know, of the there'll, only there'll games, I, honestly, this is one of the only games that ever open world games that start you off and it doesn't tell you shit. That it kind of threw me for a loop. I was like, "Did did I miss the tutorial here? Or did I miss something?" They kind of just open up the door and say, "Go." Like, That's I, a very my best experience in that game were like the first couple, you know, probably the first five to ten hours, where it was literally just like discovering everything. Like you know, your first battle, you know, your first time you get your ass kicked by an enemy that's so powerful. The first time you. Uh, like really discover like a big secret, like you climb something and really discover like a huge secret. The first time you discover a town, like all of those firsts were really, really exciting to me. The first couple of temples were really great, but as the game progressed, becomes repetitive. it became really repetitive to me. Now the horizon zero dawn, I played right before the legend of Zelda. And that was to me, a better game overall. It suited my great. taste. Well, just like, you know, people have their opinions where you think Cuphead's better than Mario or you think Cuphead's better than Legend of Zelda. People are going to have their opinions. But I played them both. One kept me tethered and attached and engaged. And the other one I drifted away from. And, you know, that's you know kind of what makes gamers gamers. Not everybody's going to like the same thing the same way. That's and I true. think there is a, a valid argument. <laughs> yeah, we got to fucking you- decide. Do you think but, you would have liked Zelda more if um, it wouldn't have been the summer of PUBG? You remember the summer of PUBG. There was, you, you there was a slight the, breeze. The weather was perfect. There was lots was. of murder in Novo. Remember Novo during the summer? It was beautiful, Remember man. Novo was beautiful. It was. I was in <laughs> Roshock alone, just taking that town. Yeah, I mean, because can we get... make the ga- our game of the year a game that's not even fucking out yet? No, I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> suggesting that i'm just saying do you think you would have enjoyed zelda more had you not been so infatuated with PUBG that summer possibly one of the issues i had this year was that there's so many great games coming out at such a fast rate that i just couldn't keep up and i rushed through horizon so i could start playing zelda you know like that's just how it went down i think that the five the top five for me is really difficult because to get doki doki and dear angelica on there i had to drop like persona five and a load of other games that (laughs) were well deserving any other year in a vacuum they were potential game of the year candidates um but we had a slew of game of the year games that came out this year and re-releases as well like games that have been re-released on other platforms i mean like pyre divinity original sin 2 for pc even something like mario plus rabbits Kingdom battles, like things like that, would be in discussions. They might not have won, but they'd be on the lists at least. This year, there's just been such high quality titles that to get a game on there, you know, you've really got to hit a, a, a knockout to even be considered. Mm. But we have to fucking decide. Can't. You know, we, we can we can reflect, but shit, we're gonna have to put our dicks on the table and, and leave them there, and we're gonna have to come up with something. We're all gonna have to decide and see. I haven't played Cuphead, so that can't be my choice. So you haven't played that. it yet? No. How have you not played Cuphead yet? I'm pretty sure there's a lot of games I play that you haven't played uh, there, it's Gary. Like, you literally put aside an hour and you could like have a, a play of Cuphead, man. I can't believe that. That's like you are Mr. Retro, aren't you? Like side-on platformers. and. Yeah, I do. Man, put the Actually... yobo down. It's a problem. Okay, what do you guys think about this for a top five in no particular order? Just to try and narrow it down. If anybody's got <sighs> a serious problem... I don't care as long as Mario's on there. That's my shit. Zelda, Cuphead, Battlegrounds, Wolf 2, and PUBG. No, you've completely ignored Mario. Just like you could take you could you could the rest of the podcast has overall out of there. You think you think get rid of PUBG and put Mario in there? A game we've put hundreds of hours in. 
Yeah, because it's a finished game. Oh, you make a strong I point there. I think you're crazy not to have Doki Doki in there. Absolutely. Hey, you're the only one who's crazy. played Get out of here, Gary. <laughs> and it sounds like it's a book anyway, not a video game. So it's, it's a yeah. visual novel. Go read that shit book. somewhere else. Is it a pop-up book? put a comic book? book in our Game of the Year discussion. Yeah, what a pop-up book. Surrounded by Philistines. <laughs> I'm sure are. One of them black, too. Or listen, Gary. Listen. All right, so right now I got six games. I got Zelda, Cuphead, Battlegrounds, Wolf 2, and Mario. No, that's five games. That's five yeah, games five. right there. Yeah, that's five. And we've not got near on the list either, man. This is this is a terrible list. Near is looking further and further away. It's not quite as near as you thought. Mm-hmm. What game do you put oh. on? What game do you take off of that top five to get near on it? PUBG. It's not a game. It's it's a early access. It's not released. We, oh we, man, but, he's saying that all those hours you spent didn't mean shit, bro. No, we were, we were beta deal. testing it. We yeah, were we were that. paying to beta test the game. <laughs> well, listen, here's here's the deal. Like in reality yes battlegrounds is an unfinished game a year from now two years from now whenever it's done it could be a completely different game and a completely different experience to what we had at the beginning of the game mm-hmm. so like i don't know you can't, can't you can't really it. judge it in, in that way in my opinion zelda will be zelda a year from now two years from now whatever right. same thing with uh cuphead wolf mario. 2 and mario PUBG right. could be they could they could make PUBG My Little Pony Simulator for all it's we know. It's a video eventually. game and I played it. I don't care what version or release date or candidate it is. It's a video game okay. that I sunk 500 hours into over the summer and had a ball doing it. I'm going to play the fifth here, right? I'm going to play the fifth and go on technicality on best game of the year, right? The category, yeah. the category itself recognizes a game that delivers the absolute best experience across all creative and technical fields. Can you tell me that Ugh. PUBG is a technically <laughs> excellent experience, delivers excellence in technical fields? Damn, bro, you just kind of shit all over your shit. It's a fun game. It's not a technically Are excellent you? field. I thought Gary was getting ready to shit on me. I was starting to duck, and I'm like, oh, he's going after Briar. This is he's awesome. Going <laughs> you can't defend the technical excellence of that game. It's no, buggy. I can't. You're right. The I animations can't. are not finished. It's it's okay, popular. So if if we take PUBG, yeah, but it's so fun. That's the thing. It's <laughs> you're so right. Fun. You're totally so right. I've put a lot of time into it as well and had a lot of fun. Like I hear what you're saying, man. I'm definitely not disagreeing. But you, Gary kind of shit on it. Do? So Gary. Cuphead, I mean, I don't. I I hear the I hear the argument and I I sort of agree with it. I'm not sure I'm 100 percent on board because, like, at some point. Fun is more fun than, you know, it means more than technical True. achievement. True. But, you know, that is part of the category. So I'm willing to take PUBG off the list if everybody else is. Mm-hmm. And we'll have a list that looks like Zelda, Cuphead, Wolf 2, and Mario. What's the fifth game? God, there's so many. I mean, Persona 5 was one of the Game of the Year nominees. Not enough of us have played it to put it through. Was Horizon on that list? I don't think it should be, but no. was it? No. I don't think it should be. No. I don't think it's Game of the Year. I mean, what does it do that's original in you? The reason I'm saying Persona is that it was it was in a class of its own within the JRPG genre. What about Hellblade? Hellblade's potential. I mean, I, I would I would argue Hellblade suffers the same problem as Wolfenstein 2, where the, the actual playing of the game isn't super good but the story and what it does there is good enough to carry it to a top five it might not be in number one but it, it could be in a top five i mean chat again behind near and i've got to lean into chat there if you've put time and effort into near you've got a game that's multi-layered multifaceted, 26 possible endings five true endings that you should play through haunting storyline platinum games combat i i think near is a much more deserving title but how's the fucking yeah. Yeah, man. Well, there's a DLC where she's in a so, in a, a, a slightly uh, maid's outfit, and if you hold L3 and R3 together on the PlayStation version, her uh, um, skirt explodes, and she's in a thong. So another fucking. plus for there's some fucking Damn, there. that's awesome. All right, put it on the list if there's fucking. I'll give it that. <laughs> Revolver decides. There's a thong. All right, we got we got six games again. Okay. We got Cuphead, Zelda, yeah. Wolf Two. Yeah. Mario, 
Hellblade and Nier. And Nier. And I got to be honest with you. The only game on here that I played and actively didn't like is Mario. Yeah, I second that. You, ukulele, yes. let's get that I'm on out. the list. This is my last time on the show. I ain't got time for this shit. <laughs> this is fucking crazy. I, I, I have trouble putting it on the list just because I didn't like it. Man, y'all, you know? man, y'all gonna make me turn hood in this motherfucker. Look, for real, man, that game is for real. This is some bullshit. <laughs> What the for, fuck is going on in this For the piece? audio listeners right now, you can visually see that Beastly is hot and bothered. This is he's some just, straight up um, bullshit right here. On the color chart, he's just gone three shades blacker and he's just sort of got <laughs> his hood self out, man. Really? This is, this is, this is dark. Kate. I'm tired of this shit. This is dark shit. What, what's, I, I mean, tell us what Mario did that other platform games haven't. Why was this Mario a game of the year aside from it having a plumber? I I, and yes, I'm ex- aware I'm saying Mario and not Mario. I refuse to say it. Well, let me explain it. to you why Mario is game of the year. I didn't explain to y'all for the last hour, man. The tech it's a technical feat to first of all to put this on a tablet, firstly. Second of all, amazing controls, beautiful game. They they married every aspect of all the meaningful meaningful Mario's from the past and somehow pull them in into this game meaningfully. I would argue it's uh, not technically that impressive. I mean, it looks oh, like pl- it, it it looks like a Mario, a 3D Mario game, and they've been doing that since the N64 ga- days. I mean, it looks like a really good one, but it's not technically it's on, that it's on, much. It's on, it's on a tablet, Brian. Yeah, so? Yeah, you got to argue it's more than a tablet. Yeah. I mean. Can we? It's it's on mobile. Also, control-wise, like, the, just the fact that I'm forced to use motion controls just pisses me off. You don't like motion controls, but that's another technical feat, man, on a tablet. And you could, I mean, no, there's so many different no. ways you can play. That was a technical feat on the Wii, and it was pretty cool. And then we told them to stop doing this, but they keep doing it anyway. I'm sorry, I'm responding to Gary's ass in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, Gary. Mario is a poor man's ukulele. What? <laughs> it is. No, I don't know. I've been being serious. I'm with Briar. A uh, game needs to immediately hook me and get me there. You might have said the tutorial started slow. You might have said, like, the Mexican world, whatever, wasn't the best. I played through the first two worlds, and if a game hasn't grabbed me by the first two worlds, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not going to... In a game, in, in a, sorry, a year that's had games that are this good, I've got a backlog of games that I know are good and I know I'm going to enjoy. I'm not going to waste time waiting for Mario to grab me. I, I didn't enjoy it. Um, I and that's probably a fault of me, because I know it's a 10 out of 10 with reviewers, um, not in my book. It, I would argue X, that it didn't, doesn't X look revolver. really much Still more. Give me a revolver so I can shoot myself. I can't believe this. Shit. <laughs> I, I would argue that it, that it just it doesn't look like it, it looks like the one that came out on Wii U before 3D World. Doesn't look that was that was better. It was a good game. I'm not like hating. I'm just stating graphically it looks more closer to something that was on the Wii U. And I get it. That's cool that it's. A, I'll, I mean, I'll Mario give you this came one. You know that it's on a tablet. It's on a it's, tablet type yeah. device, which is very impressive. Don't get me wrong; it's it's very impressive. I'll throw you a bone there. It is a tablet esque device. Um, but we're not here but, to review the Switch. We're here to yeah. You're right. Like so, game. I basically I'm agreeing with Gary and Briar that I I can't see Mario as the the game of the year. That's totally fine, guys. He's Why? out. Fuck this shit. Ah, it was nice. So, next game that we'd have to look at and try to argue about would be either Zelda, or Wolf Two, Hellblade, or Nier. So, are we looking? Are we looking at like our number one here? Is that what we're doing? I think we've eliminated Mario as our number one because so there's four games left, and all three of you guys, your number ones are there. There's another game there, but my number one's gone. This my is number one's bullshit. not there. Technically, what yeah. was your number one? Destiny. 2. Destiny two. I mean, mine's not even in the running. I got. I got to talk about Hellblade and Wolf Two. Both have a similar issue with that the actual the gameplay isn't there. Um, I. I mean, they're both amazing experiences, but mostly carried on the back of their narrative. Yeah. So I think well, you at take least for Hellblade, those, yeah. Both of those out. I hear um, you. Near, I I hear great things about it, but I just didn't fucking play it. And unfortunately, it, it is a great Gary, game. 
did you play it as well? Was yeah, Beasley? yeah. No, I didn't. I have it. Yeah, Beasley did though. I mean, I would defend a, it slightly game, harder if you guys if you guys had also played it. I'd I'd defend it a bit harder because I think I'd have a winning case there. But of of what's left, we've got Cuphead, Nia, and what else? Zelda. And Zelda, I think looking at those, Zelda's going to win, man. I feel like Zelda is the winner. I, There's I, no way. Just, it's too much. It's too I much d- to do. I, mean, I just too feel much like Cuphead is technical excellence in a in a side on shooter. But we're putting you know, we're putting a game that none of us feel really that passionate about as our best I, game of the year. I do. Well, I look, genuinely look, Brian, do. this is what I'll say. Okay, let me just say make this this uh, comment about uh, Breath of the Wild. It didn't necessarily pull me in the way that I would have liked, but I do know that if I was stranded somewhere in a desert island, I would have hundreds of hours. And as I play and really got into the game, I know I would love, you know, everybody in China ain't wrong, wrong about rice, man. Everybody loves this game. Everybody who's played this game to completion. Gary, you played this game through to completion. You know, it's amazing. All the reviewers, everybody who's played this game knows how amazing it is. So it's like, and it's so much of a game. I think that you know the other games on this list, the other two are much shorter experiences. And if you if you're gonna have masterful games, you want the biggest one. That was exactly what I was gonna say. With the ones that remaining, I think it's no contest for Zelda. me. Zelda. Yep. Yeah, I mean, once I lost Doki Doki, it was all downhill from there. So I think I got to settle on Zelda. I feel you, bro. I feel you. Okay. Some Zelda. Of bullshit. Zelda. Zelda, it is. I think it's Zelda, Zelda game of the year. I mean, you I can flame us. Cuphead. I feel like Cuphead is a flawless game. It's flawless. It's just executed I, so perfectly. I don't know if it is though. If if you like side on, you know, platform boss battle or boss blitz games, then fine. But it, what does it do over and above that? It does that perfectly. But it it has an amazing and original art style. It has amazing and original controls. Soundtrack. The controls are like just absolutely flawless. The soundtrack is amazing. Like, there's there's not a weak spot. It, the, the only weak spot it has is if you don't like the genre it sits in. Or if you don't like games that are difficult. That could be an yeah, issue for a lot of people. If you're a pussy, it. I guess it's, that's one way to look at it. <laughs> Come see me on Bloodborne then, cuz. Shit. <laughs> it's probably why I didn't like it. Um, it I, feel like, I feel like games have been doing that in that genre since the TurboGrafx-16, though. Because um, if you're looking for a console that is very shooter heavy um super Pretty nintendo courage. and turbo graphics 16 are uh great for that and there's some man there's some really fantastic shooters out there that came out like a long time ago i'm not going to qu- quite put them on like the art level as cuphead but as far as the flawless last time controls i played a and... game that was as good as this was gunstar heroes that was 20 something years good game ago. yeah it's been a I long gotta pl- time i gotta play this game I mean, yeah I guess meat boy would be in there but it's i mean it's it's, that's Mm -hmm. pretty different and shovel knight was arguably a lot of people said that was up there i mean i played a couple of levels of shovel knight Knight pretty quickly it didn't appeal to me that much and i usually like that kind of super metroid oh i loved it aesthetic Mm -hmm. i like guacamole a lot better than that yeah Mm -hmm. it wasn't my bag i mean it could be because i don't like 2d platform games that i wasn't quite i mean i enjoyed cuphead but it wasn't for me game of the year um, I just think Breath of the Wild had more of a, a lasting impact on the what games will be moving forward. And I think conversations will be had around Breath of the Wild maybe for longer than Cuphead. I think okay. Cuphead was What was about Guacamelee, bro? You really liked that game. I mean, you had nothing but good stuff to say about it. How did that stack up to uh, Cuphead? I would say it's Guacamelee was a fun game. Cuphead is a flawless game. Masterpiece. I would say so. I need to play this game. Is it? I mean, I don't. I don't like the genre, and I enjoyed it. So. No, it will not run on the Yobo, Beastly. You're gonna have to. (laughs) You're gonna have to upgrade your graphics card in that Yobo. You might get a couple, couple of frames per minute on that. Maybe throw this thing in there. (laughs) Hey, it might fit. Actually, it could stack underneath. What do you got from PCIe slots in that Yobo? I'm trying yeah. to see what's it's, it's, it's almost as thick as a PS4 controller. All it's right. Got room. So we're going Cuphead game of the year, right? Hell no, man. Oh. All right. No. <laughs> All right. That's it's reverse solid. psychology. You need to work on that shit. Uh, we're definitely going The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. I'm which admiring makes a lot of his sense. passion for this, though. Like, 
his trying, admiration and passion out, yeah. for this topic is like kind of winning me. Maybe? I mean, I could, I could. No, say. man, don't do it, Wilson. Don't give in. God damn it! Look at, I mean, no. look at those Cuphead. eyes. Cuphead look is at a those protest eyes. vote. Don't stare Just... into his eyes. That's the I, dark I, abyss. Look, at, he's trying to really I, stare into the Wilson, camera now. Don't do way, it, Wilson. Look which away. Which way are you leaning, Wilson? Which way are you leaning? Cuphead or Zelda? Because I think if you go Cuphead, we've got two for Cuphead, two for Zelda, and chat could decide. This I'm going Zelda. I like that me. idea. I kind of think we should we should put maybe some sort of a uh, straw poll or maybe something out on Twitter. Mm. Oh. Mm-hmm. Lasting thing. I don't even think there's really even competition here. I don't think any group of people <laughs> would ever fucking choose Cuphead over the You haven't played the game, game Beastly. I still don't believe that. <laughs> Shit. Five hours Brother into Zelda, no hours into long. Cuphead. Man. Gary. Yeah, I know, people. Yeah, well, it, like I said. It's, it's I, all Zelda in the comments, guys. It's Zelda. Well, Zelda, Breath of the Wild, I mean, Zelda. I Without Doki Doki, I might just put a protest vote in, vote in Destiny 2. Just to... Ash, Ash <laughs> is Cuphead. You... You like stirring the fucking pot. I think you should come Destiny with a spoon too. on I'll your back, Destiny Gary. Man, I genuinely want people to play Doki Doki. It's so good. We ain't talking about that shit no more. We yeah. right now we are on Breath of the Wild and Cuphead. It's Sometimes the only game Gary, a game isn't about. appreciated until many years after it's come out. Look at Night Trap. <laughs> you know, perfect example. It Trap Queen, man. <laughs> Major CH forty SO seven said. Zelda, clearly Cuphead is just a meme. <laughs> they fucking with you, Briar. Briar Bri said that meme is a right, masterpiece. There's a vote. There's a poll now. Everybody vote. Okay. Can I vote? So far, like, Cuphead has 100% of the votes. <laughs> <laughs> he voted. Right, there's no See, option. The first vote. <laughs> this, uh, this is flawed because there's no other where you can freeform type Doki Doki, so I think it's rigged. All right. <laughs> it it's was 50, Cuphead 50. up, 75. If Cuphead, you're in chat right Zelda. now, get your vote in there. Let's find out. It looks like on, uh, Zelda might pull away with this one. <laughs> we need your help, guys. Get in there and vote. It takes two seconds. The bro- it takes significantly less time to actually vote in real life, so this is much easier. <laughs> Like if Cuphead didn't come out this year, I'd be all over Zelda. But Cuphead, it was flawless. I <laughs> tried have a week's look. <laughs> It was the Ivan Draco of fucking video games. It was juicing. <laughs> what, <man? It's> juicing. <laughs> I... It was in the back juice. So if Cuphead was the Ivan Drago, then what to- Zelda was the Rocky Balboa? You're telling me <laughs> Zelda was out cutting what woods the in the Siberian wilderness. You know, just out there lifting up. Carts with his wife and trainer in it. That was Zelda. It's Briar, 14 to 9 right now. Briar, I tried to cheat, okay? I'm just being honest. I tried to open up a new tab and, and vote again. And this fucking thing knew. It said, your vote has been counted. Yeah. You have already voted on this poll. You, you're, you're, yeah. you're like a beginner at trolling on Twitch. This is There are fucking professionals out there, Beastly. I know. <laughs> shit. I know. I'm too old for this shit. I was Jack expecting settled it. A troll to have sort of like you know three thousand four hundred votes in one of the uh, things, Chat but no owned, one's no one's managed um, it. This and it looks like Zelda wins game of the year, and I can sleep with that because at least I fucking played that game. Ten to fourteen. It's a sad day, but it seems like uh, Chat has spoken. Zelda has taken spoken. It. Zelda has won. Briar, how do you feel? Be honest. I feel like uh, I feel like Zelda is a great game, um, and Cuphead is better. And I, I feel the same way about Mario. I think well, Mario's better sticking to them guns like fucking glue. <laughs> Pry those hey, guns look, from his cold, Revolver dead has hands. Decided, <laughs> Revolver has decided game of the year, and that game is The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, and we will honor that decision publicly anyway. Yeah, that's true. The Legend, but Zelda privately, our, there's going to be some Cuphead, some Mario, some, <laughs> some we Destiny. We got four runners up, though. We got Cuphead, Hellblade, Wolf 2 and Nier. And Doki Doki as an honorable mention. No, no, no. He didn't say Mario. See, Briar's trying to troll me. That's just so That's true. Weird. I am trying to troll you. <laughs> <laughs> Seems it's fair. So, it's so wrong. We've got it. They, they stuck I mean, Mario I just leave was, this there was six, up for long enough. There was six 
contestants. Start promoting and, and and they snuffed Mario out first. One of the best games of the year got snuffed out. Tell me this shit ain't rigged. Well, I think we've uh, we've settled it now. That's it. That's that's decided what's going to win Game of the Year in all subsequent categories. Um, yep. You don't even need to watch the Game of the Year awards anymore. Now you've yeah. seen it live on Revolver. Right. Just rewatch this that night. Um, <laughs> oh, yes. Go back. Let's see how it's come back up. and watch it again. In fact, watch it on Podbean. Watch it on iTunes and leave reviews. That's the leave most important reviews. thing. Watching yeah, it is only half the battle. You win the war by leaving reviews. So, again, if you support what we do um, and you just enjoy bad entertainment, then please head to iTunes, Revolver Live on iTunes, leave a review, leave a like. Um, we'll be eternally grateful. There's one other bit of shameless promotion that I would like everyone right here in chat now. If you could do me one gracious favor, if you're on Twitter, could you please hit up the guys at uh, Dicks by Mail? <laughs> that is, uh, Wilson, if you could put at Dicks by Mail in the chat for us. I know you're there. Um, if you could tag either Briar, BC, myself, or Wilson in it and tell them to sponsor us. We are currently harassing this company left and right to get sponsorship. Uh, we will promote them for free uh, <laughs> enough until they do. Dicks by, Dicks by Mail is a company where you can anonymously send friends, colleagues, co-workers, or loved ones penises bags of penises in the mail they explode um, too they explode much like i do uh, whenever this show comes live we're really desperate to get a sponsorship from them we feel like they're a perfect match for us if you feel that they're a match for us too please tweet at them let them know that we're interested let them know that we talk about them a lot and we're giving them free promotion as it is so why not make this an official deal put a ring on it guys in fact put a cock ring on it guys we're here <laughs> provide it don't hide oh, it so good at this shit if you guys would like to become a part of the show in the future a few weeks ago we had an entire show of topics submitted by our viewers if you'd like to submit your own topics or suggestions you can do that at revolvergamescast at gmail.com that's revolvergamescast at gmail.com. Be sure to leave us any feedback or any topics you'd like to see on the show in the future at revolvergamescast at gmail.com. Yeah, next week we should read out some of the uh, funny um, reviews. reviews again. That was fun. Yeah. yeah. Put your reviews <laughs> yeah. in iTunes. We'll read them for you next week. So we look forward to <laughs> yes. seeing those. Um, I mean, we say it every week. The best review will get a dick pic from <laughs> one of the hosts of the show. It's an ongoing gag. Just as an FYI and a warning, you may want to clean out some mailbox size if you get Beastly's one because that's a fucking <laughs> large file. It's a hey, large a, format picture right there. It's <laughs> hey, a big file that you'll get sent to. It's a through. big file size. That's like that's within terabytes. How many megapixels in that, Beastly? Uh, 40. 40. 40? Uh, yeah. Long 40 lens. megapixels. Respect. <laughs> <laughs> that's one megapixel per two inches you do the math <laughs> that's <laughs> about right <laughs> thank you guys so much for watching uh of course you can always uh well we'll see you next week i guess i'm gonna play the video again one maybe, time. maybe yeah maybe we'll see you, maybe we won't. Yeah, maybe. yeah should we shout out who made this video yeah, oh, it was Omega Ross. That's right. We forgot to say it. Omega. Video, Thank you, Omega. Omega Ross submitted this video. It was really funny. And uh, thank you so much, Omega. Uh, yes. I, I laughed pretty hard when I first saw it. And, uh, yeah. That's the thing. I got Yobo. We love getting fan mail. So if you, if you guys enjoy this enough to be mad enough like Omega to make us anything funny, any funny videos, artwork, stories, pictures, etc., send them to us. Tweet them at us. We'd love to see them. So, again, you might get featured on the show like Omega. Or you might not, but we'll still watch you the might video. Not. <laughs> we, will do. we might even claim it as our own work. To be honest, we're that scandalous. That's true. And you'd love it. We're going to claim your work, and you're going to love it. Thank you, guys. All right, guys. We'll see you next week. Thank you so much for watching. I'll play the video one more time. When you're getting ready to fuck the mic, Big Bird, make sure.